I'm on my prime, I'm feeling like Steph. I'll get my shot and I promise it's wet. Waited too long, but I told him I'm next. I need my bag, it's want me to check. Cable was mine, I ain't taking less. I told him all I'm as real as it gets. Shit be a shit, dog, I'm cutting the net. I thought I told him I came for my spot. They told me time is like money, that's why I made it. I swear that I'm spending a lot. They never seen the hours I put in to get here. They only just see what I got. I spent my time in the lab all this winter. I swear that the summer is gonna be hot. I cannot lie on this shit. I paid a lot for this shit. They got some money to spend. I got some money to get. I gotta talk on this shit. I swear I told him I'm here. I feel like I'm in the league. I just keep making these hits. Took a little break, but I swear that I'm back. Go and ask anybody, put a city on the map. They was trying to call when they sent a contract, but I never replied unless they sent it for the max. Everything I said, man, they know it's all facts. Told them if they want a verse, then they go and get text. Told them last year that I'm coming for it all. Go and check the numbers, dog, I'm putting up stats. Yeah. I'm on my prime, I'm feeling like Steph. I get my shot and I promise it's wet. Waited too long, but I told them I'm next. I need my bag, just want me to check. Cable was mine, I ain't taking less. I told them all I'm as real as it gets. So shit be a shit, dog, I'm cutting the net. You need, yeah, man, I got it, wow. What you say, hey, we about it, huh? Get the cream, yeah. Why you slacking? Why you sucking all the top, boy, you capping? What you need, hey, yeah, I got it, huh? What you say, yeah, we about it, wow. Get the cream, yeah. Why you slacking? Why you sucking all the top, boy, you capping? Yeah, why you capping? Why you capping, no? Feel like a rubber band, I've been snapping now. Yeah, I've been up here with my team, so you know this what I mean. We've been going up like now. Let's go, Yankees. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Knights at the Round Table. And oh my God, do we have a lot to say today. <laughs> we already got a bunch of super chats in here. I want to get to those quickly, but I got to introduce you guys to the panel. Not like you guys don't know who these gentlemen are. But let's go around the room real quick from the Bronx of nothing. We got Mario and Kev. What's good, fam fam? Que lo que, que lo que. Estamos aquí activo. Almost time for opening day. What a crew we got here. Nesta Cortez on the mound. Make sure you uh, have know, some liquor next to you. I know Kev's bullshit. <laughs> we can hear him. Yeah, you can hear me. I'll fuck with you. Ha <laughs> ha. I just want to make you swear. What's up, guys? What's up, chat? How's it going? How you doing? How you doing? From... The NYYST podcast. We got the one, the only Christian. If you smell what NYYU you is cooking. Let me tell you something. Speaking of cooking, we got Mr. Lasagna. What's good, fam fam? Let's go. Let's go. This is the big one, baby. Season starts tomorrow. Let's get it. Okay. All right. A little big one action. Okay. Right below <laughs> Mario, we got the grand motherfucking one himself. That's right. The one, That's the right. only, Francis Lee. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's go. 2024. Little, was that wrong? Should I, I, we're probably going to get turned off because I did a little Vince McMahon impression right there. That's <laughs> Cancel. Oh, shit. Oh, Cancel. Okay. If you, oh, I, no. I, no. You, you said his name. That's it. It's over. Damn, right. shit. Well, that also means I can quote tweet this with the, with the meme. So it's Yes, cool. definitely can. So, but let's get right into it. We got a couple of super chats. I want to get to those. But here's super. what I'm going to ask you guys. So for the chat, please listen to this. Please, please, please pay, pay close attention. You're going to know what the topic is. Super chats will be answered. We're not going to be looking much at the chat because we got so much going on. Please try to make the super chat about the topic. That's all I ask. You're going to see what the topic is about. But we got a couple of them. I need to read these off before we get started. So as always. Thank you for being a friend. Our guy Connor O'Neill says, Sup everyone. Opening day is finally here. Uh, Juan 4Q and Soto is a Yankee and going to hit a go-ahead homer off the Houston Cheaters. Then Rodon is throwing a no-no game to... Love you oh all. God. Tonight will be epic, just like NYYU spring training. 
Then we got a couple of more here. Hopefully, I still have them all in the chat. I think I do. Rod Thompson says, special Rod. shout out to the fellas. Pete, how you doing? Francis, where the abuela's at? Ha, ha, ha. Mario, Christian, okay, okay. Percy voice. Kevin, your skin is about as perfect as Michael Jackson before the Pepsi accident. <laughs> Real G's move in silence like lasagna. Hey, okay. let's go. A little lasagna action. Okay. I know we had some more, so I don't know what's going on in my chat, but I want to get to everybody. DJ Steel says, uh, round table, and you guys are in a square shape. Anywho, what's up, fellas? Do me a favor. <laughs> hit us with an I, Mario. Kev. Oh, my God. Here you go. I told you. I, Mario. I told you, brother. <laughs> Kyle Malay says, can't wait for tomorrow. I think Juan Soto gets the first Yankee homer. I think the Yankees win 7-5, to five, and I think that might be all... Of the super no cody keith another great season is upcoming let's go guys come on please let us get to the show crackle nuts this isn't <laughs> a show without crackle nuts oh my god my guy bernard just dropped 20 fucking memberships let's go bernard <laughs> bro you talk about a way to kick off the show we gotta kick it off Gotta kick off the season, real can't talk. Even talk we can't even talk the, Yankees yet, man. We can't real talk MVP Yankees yet. Right, I, think, here, I think we're safe. We might be safe right now. Guys, we're going to tell you what topic it is, I promise. We're also going to announce who wins the tickets to NYYU Day momentarily. But let's get into the fucking action. Tomorrow is opening day. The New York Yankees are back. And we got to start with, and if you see my finger, I cut my finger off today. No joke. I cut oh, a whole chunk. I really did. I cut a whole chunk no of my way. finger off. And look how ghetto this shit is. To you got the Kobe it. finger. Since this morning, since this morning hey. I chopped that shit up trying to cut some cabbage for my nah, salad, you, all right? You about, you about to go right, crazy right. today. Or or was I playing with my prick too much and it just... Come on, brother. <laughs> oh. Come on, brother. Hey, hey, brother. This is a family on, show. Let's go. All Jeez. right, guys. We are starting <laughs> with the offseason. We all know the moves the Yankees made. And on top of doing all that, the New York Yankees did make an additional move today as they got John Bertie from the Marlins, which I am absolutely excited for. So here's what I want us to do. We're going to go around the room. We're going to give a grade first for the offseason. Then we'll go into a discussion about it. Super chats. If you're going to super chat, let it be about the offseason now. I give the New York Yankees a B plus. Only thing stopping me from an A, they didn't get another starting pitcher that I wanted. Kev, we'll go to you next. I will give it an A as well. Um, just I gave it I a B talk plus, about it. okay? Uh, oh, I thought you said I gave it an A. Okay, so I'll give it an A. <laughs> Anytime you get Soto and then the last... It was going to be a B plus, but the last splash actually made me happy. We'll talk about it later. All right. Uh, Chris, Christian? Yeah, I'm on a B plus. Uh, I think they needed one more starting pitcher, especially to cover them while Cole's out. But I think they did a really good job this offseason improving the team. Agreed, Mario? Uh, I'm going to go with an A minus only because we'll talk about it. But I think this rotation can be sneaky good. Not for a long period of time, but maybe the first couple of months. So I'll go with Johnny? A-. I was gonna go B, but I mean you gotta add the plus for Juan Soto. Mm. Um, that was a that was our white whale right there. You can't you can't give it anything less than the B plus if you get Juan Soto. I mean, obviously I have my gripes with the rotation and that kind of stuff, right. but I mean you add another outfielder in Verdugo, you added Grisham, you added some more depth. We got some more left-handed bats in the lineup. Um, I mean, a lot to be excited about. Happy for Stroman, too. I know that was a kind of a controversial ad, but um, a lot to be happy about and excited. Just wish we had one less question mark in the rotation, but uh, we'll touch Agreed. on that later. Agreed. Francis? Yep, I got to I gotta agree. I'm B plus. B plus. I like, uh, I like where our rotation is at, despite the big injury to the horse at the top. Uh, like Lasagna just finished saying, when you add Juan Soto to this lineup, I mean, it's kind of hard to go anything lower than a B plus. Right. Even with everything going on. So I'm rocking B plus, man. I'm excited. Okay. Got a couple of B pluses around there. Chat, of course, you guys let us know. We got a lot of you already saying it. Got a super chat from our guy, Hector. Says, hide your grandma's Francis Lee can smell that SSI check oh from 10 God. miles away. Damn, go oh to security, bro. We got a big one here from Jeff. He goes, what's up, fam? Feels like it's been years since games mattered. My kids asked if they could stay home tomorrow to watch the game. Question is, is the roster set or is there another move out there? Pete, where's my NYYU jersey? NYYU 420. 
I'm working on the jerseys. I really do hope I could get some jerseys made that, that we can um, get out there to everybody. But let me start here uh, with the New York Yankees. If you guys have been watching, and we got 300 people in here, guys, smack that like button, hitty the subby. We're about to hit 23,500 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. But let's let let's discuss Soto. Uh, back before there was an NYYU, I was making videos about the Yankees doing anything they can to get Soto way back in the Washington Nationals days. And let me tell you something. There was not a better fit for this offense than Juan Soto becoming a New York Yankee. Me and Mario, salute to my guy Mario. We stay live for 13 hours. It Eesh. happened. It got done. Soto was a Yankee. We made it work. We're extremely excited about that. He is the perfect fit for this club across the board. On base percentage, they, they sucked at it last year. I think they were 27th in baseball, something like that. It was a horrible number. He adds a, a better average, uh, of course, power. But, of course, on top of that, just his mere presence does something to the Yankees lineup that they did not have last year. People talked about defense. Who gives a poot when you had guys like Bowers out there and Billy McKinney? Exactly. Who cares about those guys? Oswaldo Cabrera started opening day in left field last year, so that's all there you really you need to know. Oswaldo mm -hmm. Cabrera out there. Of course, Marcus Stroman, great. The only gripe I had with the Yankees was not adding an additional starting pitcher. I don't know if that's going to come back and bite them in the ass. We're going to talk about the rotation. But for yeah. me, it was a hell of a job by the Yankees this offseason. They, they really kind of um, turned a leaf on the whole, you're no longer the Yankees. They did a lot of good things. They really did. They, they're making us excited about this team we want to watch again. I'm, I'm pumped for what they did this offseason. Kev? Yeah, man, listen... Every, I think everybody has a little bit of a sense of maybe we don't know what this rotation is going to look like. And I and I, yeah. and I said something earlier in a space where, where Mario was in there as well. A lot of guys were in there from Yankee Twitter. And it's the, this 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 rotation has the potential to be sneaky good yep. or to be a shit show. I don't think there's any Agreed. in between. I don't think there's any in between. It's either going to be sneaky good or it's going to be a shit show. And that remains to be seen. But the good, good news, and I think... I know Christian is there because he he had the, the podcast the night of the cold news is that Cole's only going to be out two months. If two of these guys could start off hot and, and ride the wave until Cole's here, I think the Yankees could survive this. So well, let's, let's pray. Let's let's pray on that. <laughs> we'll, we'll pray at the end, but let's pray on that because I don't well, know but, about that. Besides the rotation, the bullpen, a lot of people had questions about the bullpen. And mm -hmm. then you have Matt Blake doing his magic. Birdie's here. Dennis, uh, Dennis Santana's here who should Make the fucking roster. We'll talk about it. Why not later? Mm. But the bullpen looks good. Ian Hamilton looks good. Clay Holmes looks like himself again. So I don't have issues with the with the bullpen right now. That looks phenomenal. And we already you already kind of talked about the offense adding Verdugo. Um. So and then adding at the end right there, adding John Birdie. Imagine mm. this. Uh, Christian just said we we had uh, Cabrera as our left fielder last year. We we are about to have Cabrera as our third baseman. For who yeah. knows long, uh, who knows how long, because you know bone bruises last long. So adding Birdie at the end was a little cherry on top for the Yankees. So I'm I'm happy right now. I'm a happy captain. All right, Mario. <clears throat> yeah, I kind of want to touch more about the Juan Soto deal just to start off the off season. Pete, you and I going 13 hours. By the way, don't know if I was even alive for half the time. I feel like I was sleepwalking at. At you were punching Morosi there. in the face. You were threatening oh, yeah. everybody on Twitter and everything. He was going nuts, this guy. Yeah, yeah, I just couldn't do it anymore. You but lost you hair, know, too, after it. Let's not talk about <laughs> it. The chat, the chat's never going to let me let, uh, live that one down. But you know how I felt about the Juan Soto deal. That I think it was going to happen. I believe I said at um, nights at the round table towards the end mm. of the offseason, or the end of the season, I said, listen, I think there's maybe a 10% chance, 5% chance we get Juan Soto. Yep. The other options? Bellinger, you guys know how I felt about Bellinger. The other mm -hmm. free agents didn't really move me. We got kind of mm -hmm. lucky with the Juan Soto deal and them signing Bogarts to that big deal. And, and you know, it happened to fall our way, but there was other moves. And I want to head on the bullpen real quick. I feel as Yankee fans, honestly, I know how we feel about Brian Cashman. But when it comes to the bullpen, they figure out a way to get guys, like Kevin said, Denny yep. Santana had a phenomenal spring training, did not make – a 26-man roster. That was one of the guys that I was actually looking forward to. Same. But there were some tough decisions made, even Boone said. It was tough, you know, 
tell Dennis he wasn't making a team, but I'm sure he'll have um, contributions, you know, later in the season. But really excited, like Kevin said, getting birdie, kind of the cherry on top, and I'm ready to go, man. I'm excited, and I'm excited for this offense. So I really oh, yeah. think I really think we're gonna hit, and that's coming up. That's one of the big, the first big, big topics for 2024 that we're gonna discuss. Christian, go ahead. So you go look at the timeline of this off season, and the Yankees banged out early. Okay, they banged it. All right, <laughs> banged and, out. Okay. Verdu Verdugo and Soto, hey, right? And then the problem is they never hit. Uh, I mean, getting Juan Soto is the peak, right? You're really not gonna go past that, but. Right. I think fans, myself included, were kind of chasing that high the rest of the offseason. And because they didn't get Yamamoto, they didn't get Snell, they didn't get Corbin Burns, they didn't get Dylan Cease, we kind of feel unfulfilled this offseason. But this mm. is the best offseason that Brian Cashman has had in probably a decade. So oh, yeah. I think the Yankees agree. have realized that this is a year that they need to really push their chips to the middle of the table. The problem is they're not all in because mm. they didn't get Dylan Cease. They didn't get Corbin Burns. They they realized that uh, Garrett Cole is going to be out two months, and they didn't get desperate. So, I mean, I think they did a lot of really good things, but they didn't put the cherry on top of what could be a championship team. Now, you know, we talk about this all the time. We watched Spencer Jones on TV. I, I was in Somerset when he made his uh, double-A debut last year. The guy's a physical Spencer, uh, specimen. Mm. There's a lot of stuff to like about him, but he's supposed to be a championship buster, championship or bust season. You're telling me he's coming in between me and Corbin Burns. I don't know. I kind of have a little bit of a problem with that. You can call me short-sighted, but when we haven't won since 2009 and we can be in a one-year window, I don't know, dude. I'm thinking a little bit differently about the future. Yep. But... That said, I, that's why I gave it a B plus. I think they did a really, really good job of improving this team this offseason. Uh, this team couldn't hit for shit last year. Having Verdugo and Soto in this that lineup every day and the fact that the Yankees don't have to play in L.A., which means a judge should play 155 games this year. I, they'll, be, they'll, they'll score some runs. And like everybody's been touching on, the bullpen. Yeah, Cashman is great especially with Matt Blake as his pitching coach, uh, putting this bullpen together. Who trusts Clay Holmes to close out a big game, though? Not me. We're gonna. I, I, that is something I'm really <laughs> looking forward to talk about, but we that's, know we'll get there. That's what gets me, man. But other than that, and it's like, Kev, Kev you were the one who said it, shit show or good, nothing in between with this rotation. <clears throat> I'm, I'm with you 110%, bro. I really am with that statement. Johnny? Yeah, I mean, similar to what some others have said. Um, <clears throat> big thing for me was, I mean, looking at that lineup last year, looking at left field, we had guys like Hicks and Bowers and uh, Billy McKinney, and you got a, a, a bunch of those Franchi Corderos. I mean, I, I want major league Frenchy. caliber hitters. I want guys who can contribute. I want above mm -hmm. average major league quality bats. Um, so when you add a, a Juan Soto, when you add a Verdugo, um, that helps a lot. Um, I think Grisham will play up a little bit at Yankee Stadium. Obviously, he's a lefty. Um, his numbers against lefties aren't aren't too bad either. So maybe he can he can spot in there for Verdugo every now and then. Maybe he can, I don't know, find a a day or two to to get Judge off his feet and play some outfield. Um, so those things I was really happy with with the offense. Um, I think Volpe and Wells are going to have pretty solid seasons, mm. um, especially Wells coming off of a, a really solid rookie campaign. Um, I've always been a a, a Stroman dude, even though. Um, he's kind of not been a fan favorite amongst the the base, but um, the guy goes out there and competes. He can change speeds. He doesn't need that overwhelming velocity to compete. So um, he's going to hit his spots. He's going to keep you in the game. So that's something we definitely needed. Um, losing Garrett Cole, though, I mean, that obviously huge, huge blow. Um, something, I mean, even with Garrett Cole, we were looking at our rotation kind of skeptical. Um, now that Garrett Cole is out, you're sliding in a guy like, like Luis Hill, Obviously, it throws 100. We love the stuff. But how long is the elbow going to hold up? Uh, Carlos Rodon, injury prone, had a rough year last season. How is his confidence? Um, Nestor's had trouble rebounding from his his starts. So that's kind of a concern as we go on through the season. Um, a, lot of, a, a lot of question marks in that rotation, and that's something I'm still a little uh, iffy about. Um, but overall, good offseason. I really would have loved to have Snell or Monty, but I understand the budget and the luxury tax and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I think I think Monty was definitely more doable than Snell was just because there wasn't that international pick that you lose and all that kind of money. But um, overall, 
oh, pretty happy with it. Hopefully we can get an arm at the deadline um, and we'll just have to see how it goes. I think Cease was more doable than both of them, but you know, we could touch, we could touch on that when it comes to pitching Francis. Yeah. Um, it's going to be tough not to rehash anything that you guys have already said. Yeah, when you go last, it's tough. <laughs> the one thing, the one thing I can, I think add or just reiterate is that, you know, for me, this off season at the outset started off really well. And, you know, there's, there was a, a lull that kind of lasted up until like this last, you know, week or so where, you know, there was disappointment and you can feel it, you know, on Yankees mm -hmm. Twitter, just, or even, you know, these episodes that we do every week, whether it be DS or other kinds of lives, just seeing the reaction get we were getting from fans, that fans did kind of get disappointed because yep. you got Juan Soto, you got Verdugo, you got Trent Grisham, like started off really high. And then it's like the pitching, Strowman was brought in and it was like, okay, but this is not going to be the only move. As a matter of fact, I think Pete, you did a video immediately and said, this can't be the only move. This can't be the only move. This can't be the only move. Yep. And here, here we are, opening day tomorrow, and Strowman, Strowman was it for the rotation, right? Now, they can tell us, you know, to their blue in the face that they tried, um, and, and I would hate to think that the Yankees are becoming that team that, you know, yeah, we tried, we, we offered this, we offered that, it just didn't work out kind of thing. So I'm going to pretend, right, that I kind of believe that, that answer right now, and I'm going to give fans a little reason to be hopeful and say, hey, maybe the Snell deal, the Monty deal were things that the Yankees didn't want to make at this point, but are options that the Yankees could be planning to revisit halfway through the season where that salary is cut in half and it literally becomes half the, the double salary they have to pay because mm -hmm. of their luxury tax situation. Um, Monty, I don't necessarily think he wanted to be in New York um, you know, just seeing the fact that he went all the way to Arizona after spending the whole offseason in Boston and basically begging them to sign him. But Blake Snell seems like, I mean, I don't want to get your hopes up too high, guys, but I mean, let's see what happens with the Giants. If they're still in it, it's going to be tough. But if they're not, he might be a guy that they look to flip halfway through the year. And you never know, maybe the Yankees revisit it then and kind of undo some of that uh, bad taste that we had in our mouth with the rotation at this point. But I think Kev said it. There is a possibility for this rotation to be sneaky good. And I'm going to, I'm going to lean on that side when we, you know, get a little bit deeper into it later on. Yeah, no, there's, there's, there's so much to, um, that, that we're going to still cover, uh, to go over, but, um, no, you're spot on. Let's get to these, uh, super chats. We got my guy, Macho King says, I give the off season a B plus still need a starter and pen arm. Soto was key for a Stroman is a good addition. Got to make a move at the deadline. He adds it with a, Oh Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Kevin, oh my God, says smacky to likey, hitty the subby. Connor O'Neill says, I give it a B. I just lost it. Where did it go? Uh, one second. I think here it is. Uh, I give it a B C. A B C? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. We got Juan Soto, <laughs> and looks like some guys uh made adjustments to their swing. Was hoping for a pitcher, but our bats will mash this year. And then the last one we have is from Michelina, who says, I'm rooting for Cleveland to have a bad season. Okay. 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 Oh, little, Cle shit. Little, little Cleveland hate here. Okay. All right. Since you guys just brought up it's Montgomery, can I just, can I just read something real quick? Go ahead. I don't, this is old, so I don't know if uh, you guys have read this already, but Jim Bowden said the Yankees were in on Montgomery, but they uh, their offers required heavy deferrals of 15 to 20 years. <laughs> Yeah, I did see that. I don't. Honestly, uh, I'll be honest. I never believe anything Jim Bowden says. To be honest, I don't believe that. That's yeah. fucking why. Yeah, it's not. I, it's I not even. A, it's not a shot to Bowden. It's just fifteen to twenty years for the that Yankees. Doesn't even, but that doesn't even shot. sound like mine a Yankee. That doesn't even sound like a Yankee <laughs> thing to do. Like they're not no. really into deferral. But, but I also, I also heard that they just were copying the Dodgers. That's what they're doing. They never if moved from the initial talks <laughs> with Monty. That's what I heard too. Other people yeah. reported. I saw that too. They they just tapped in pretty much. Yep. Really yeah. quick, guys. The voicemail line is open. I just can't give you guys an honest, honest answer if we're gonna be able to get to them. But it is 804-592-6160. We got 14 right now. There's no way we're getting to all Oof. those, but we will certainly try to get to a few of them. Again, 804-592-6160. Before we move on to the leadership side of the conversation, uh John Heyman has said that there's whispers. That Which Garrett is, Cole okay. is targeting June first for his return, and he feels great. June fifth, so, Garrett. June fifth. What's June fifth? Well, Christian's not gonna go. Christian's not gonna go if Garrett Cole's not back. 
Juan Soto <laughs> basketball jersey night, bro. I already got tickets. Oh. My, if he shows up four days early, I'm going to fight him. And then <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to hug him. And then I'm going to fight him again. So let's get into this part. This is, let's discuss really quickly how we feel. And this is, you know, getting into the 2024 season. Yankees leadership. Because I'm, I, maybe I'm a little off on this one. Maybe some of you will agree with me. Brian Cashman, I, I honestly, I have my problems, my beefs with Brian Cashman in the past, 100%. Okay, got I got a lot of beef with Brian Cashman from the past. Okay. A lot of the stupid ass moves Which that haven't it? worked. A lot of stuff there. Hal Steinbrenner, the one thing you want him to do is spend his money. He spent his money. You cannot yeah. argue that he has not spent because he has. If you want to argue the way he spent and the man he's allowing to spend his money, that's, that's a right. whole nother conversation. Right. But I'm only looking at right now going forward. My problem is with the manager of the New York Yankees, and that is, again, Aaron Boone. And we have not even started the year, and he's already given me fucking Ajita because oh I heard him talk today, okay? And it gave me Ajita already just hearing his voice. I am still concerned mm. that no matter who this team has on it, I don't know if they could win with this guy helm in the ship. And I don't want to get into predictions. I'm not going to get into predictions now. I ask that none of us get into predictions now. But out of all the guys on leadership, still, my biggest concern is Aaron Boone. I'll toss it up to the room. We'll switch it up this time. Francis, you go first. It's um, right in front of us. Oh god! Can I? Can I? Can I up that? Can I up that one? I'm gonna up that one. Here we go. Oh god! Go ahead. I, I know what you don't like. It was kind of bullying, frankly. There you go. <laughs> was he crying? He was. He With was. tears down his bullied. eyes, he said that. He got it's bullied. Tough, like, he got bullied. It's tough to follow that. So the question is, which out of the big three of our front office am I concerned the most about? Most concerned with, yes, going forward. Um. This might sound a little weird out of the box. Okay, still talking okay. about boxes. Box, he but likes boxes. Okay. I, I, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually say that out of the three, the one who still concerns you the most is Cashman, and I'll, mm. I'll explain why. He had an amazing off season this off season. I, I agree with the sentiment that this might may have been the best off season in the last decade, but he is also still the GM that continues to tell us that Aaron Boone is the guy. Hal is not the one who makes that personnel decision. Hal defers to Brian Cashman for those decisions. Brian Cashman is the one pulling all the strings when it comes to the mm. on-field product that the Yankees produce, and he continues to put his faith in Aaron Boone. Now, Aaron Boone may be the, the bigger problem, but for me, we can't get rid of that problem unless Brian Cashman sees it fit. So to me, he's the one who concerns me the most because he doesn't seem like he's going to move off that anytime soon, and I just I don't see why not. Like, you... You have a situation where your rotation is being held by duct tape and prayers, and you have this guy being able to press the button. That that That's not the best way to go into it. That's why I guess we have so much trepidation when we look at the pitching right now because okay, the, bullpen, the bullpen can be really good. The rotation can possibly be sneaky good, but is Boone going to press the right buttons to make that happen, or is he going to be the reason that they look really shitty? Mm. So, I'll leave it. I'll I'll leave it there because I don't I don't want to. Yeah, I want you guys Johnny, to add on to Johnny, that. Johnny, don't let me down, Johnny. We're gonna have milk and cookies together, you son of a bitch. I promise you. This this is the Mister Nap Nap Room, Mister <laughs> Warm Milky and Cookies when you have a bad game. Yeah. Mister Struck out seven times, seventeen times during the game, but I thought we had some good at bats. Come on, that's baby. the fucking guy. That is the guy that is a big issue with this team. You look at the line of construction. Hey, one, one Soto played 162 games last year. This year, I guarantee he plays 150, and it's going to be a bunch of load management bullshit. Facts. They're Facts. going to make up some shit because they're yep. goofy analytics upstairs. Thinks he might have a fucking hangnail if he plays more than four games in a row. So <laughs> these are these are the kind of things that really irritates me with this team. And you have Miss Aaron Boone is is the substitute teacher that walks in the classroom, and everyone looks around and says, "Oh, we're going to get away with whatever the fuck we want." Bingo. That's who Aaron. That's, that's who so Aaron good. Boone is. That is can, so fucking good. You can man. throw erasers at your friends. You can just fucking stand up. You can do whatever the fuck you want. You can bring food in class. Aaron Boone's not going to do shit. He's going to pat you on the back and and read you a bedtime story. So, that's my feelings on Yankees leadership. In case you were wondering how I really felt, um, that, those are my Aaron Boone feels. But I mean, uh, Brian Cashman. I think he did a decent job in the off season. Um, he patched up a lot of holes in the lineup. Uh, it was, there's more lineup balance. We needed Verdugo. We needed a Grisham. We needed a, 
a Juan Soto, obviously, who doesn't need a Juan Soto, but um the Mets can't, can't really be can't really be sad about the way the offense looks. I like Stroman too, but just like what Francis said, um the the rotation is being held together by a guy that blew up his elbow a couple years ago, uh Nestor, who is a cartoon character at this point, and Carlos Rodon. <laughs> who was flipping people off in the stands and having confidence issues. So if those are the three guys that you want to ride or die on a potential one year of Juan Soto, cool. Uh, that is not how I would have done it, but uh, you know, the Yankees front office knows everything and we don't know shit. So that's how I feel about leadership. All right, Christian, give it to us. All right. So I'm going to take Hal. I'm going to put him over here, right? Cause Hal's job as owner is to do two things. One spend oh, yeah. money and hire somebody to spend that money. All right, so he spends the money. His problem for me has always been who he allows to spend his money because, mind you, everybody that's all up in arms about the luxury tax this year, you guys realize that we're paying $16 million this year to Aaron Hicks and Wash Donaldson, right? God, that's damn. on the payroll for this year. Mm. Who did that, okay? Cash, Cashman, right. yep. So now it comes down to between Cashman and Aaron Boone, okay? Aaron Boone? This guy walks in to Tampa, and the first fucking thing out of his mouth is, I know too much about Taylor Swift. Bro, you should know too much about winning baseball games. You're a baseball guy, bro. Tell me that you know more about baseball and winning championships. I don't give a shit what a flat-ass pop star has to do with you being the manager of the New York Yankees, okay? It's irrelevant to me. I don't care that these are cute social... Fuck social media. You're the manager of the Yankees. You've been here way too fucking long. Nobody's been allowed to manage this team for five years without winning a world series except for you okay so it's time to cash in and become a championship manager can he do it i don't know and everybody mm. that says that says oh it doesn't i think talent can overcome aaron boone i really believe that i think mm. this offense can overcome his stupidity mm. at times i think if we have guys like garrett cole and carlos rodan be in that alpha dog and if stroman be i think the talent can overcome him i really believe that the problem is, is the talent there? So whose job is it to put the talent on the team? That's Brian Cashman. And I think offensively, you couldn't have asked him to do a better job with the offense this offseason. Bringing in Juan Soto and, and Alex Verdugo being that big guy, couldn't ask for them to do a better job. Yep. The problem is, and I'm going to give him credit for signing Marcus Stroman because after whiffing on Yamamoto, there's been, there would have been offseasons where the Yankees wouldn't have, haven't even brought in anybody as good as Marcus Stroman. So I'll give them credit for that. But Before here's the, we, oh, sorry, go ahead. But here's my issue, and I'll say it quickly. You know, you needed somebody else even before Garrett Cole came in, came and got injured, right? Right. Why is Spencer Jones holding up deals? If you look, I'll get, I'll put him over here and say you don't want to trade him. Fine. Why can't you accomplish anything without Spencer Jones being in a deal? You've been a general manager of this team for 30 friggin' years. You can't use some savvy, some intellect, some creativity to get a deal done without Spencer Jones that other teams are walking away from you and trading aces into your own division? I mean, I hate to be if a George were alive guy because I despise that more than anything. But Jesus Christ, if George was alive and you allowed Corbin Burns to get traded in the division in, in, in a, this never type happening. of season? Come on, bro. Never never would happen. Never would happen. Before I get to you, Mario and Kev, I want to get a couple of these super chats because I'm going to lose some of them. L.I. Yankee King says, Yankees rotation oh. is fine. We don't need a starting pitcher with Will okay. Warren. Easily called up. This is Cashman's offseason. Best offseason of his career. And I'll stay by that take. You might have missed 09. Relax. Let's, uh, let's Relax, continue buddy. on. Yeah, L.I., L.I., calm down a little bit. Connor O'Neill says they're having cigars and Brugal this year. No naps and cupcakes. Boone fired. Shelly Duncan hired. Well, if that's happening, a lot of shit probably went pretty damn wrong. <laughs> NYY Matt says lasagna was the best pickup of the offseason. Okay. Hey, I had a better, I had a better off season than Cashman. Okay. Just saying. Kyle Malay says my eight year old <laughs> daughter can manage better than Boone. Rob says Fishman is the biggest issue. Boone gets his yes. direction from analytics. He never yes. makes a decision on his own. Even milk yes. and cookie time is not yes. Boone's decision. But here's my problem with that. And I don't wanna I don't wanna take away from anybody's time, but here's my issue with that. Then at some point, be a fucking man. At some point, recognize that you have a long history. I've talked about this every offseason of great baseball people in your family. 
it is then your fault that you're accepting this and you're just happy to be the Yankee manager and in uh, no other words, be a be a pussy. Tux Excuse cut, my bro. language, but that's all, that's the only way I could put it because that's what you're doing. You're deciding that I'm no longer in charge of of how I run my club. I'll just let other people do it. And that to me is is not what Boone should be doing. Michelino says, I mentioned Cleveland, meaning the possibility of picking up Bieber or Class A. Makes sense. Melanie with the super chat. And then we also have Old Sarge, Christian killing it in a douche whistle free zone. <laughs> Still taking a shot at Chris. Damn, Mario, bro. go ahead. Before you do, I'm Damn. sorry. We got 400 plus in here, guys. I need you guys to hit that like button. We don't even got 200 likes yet. Smack Smack that likey. Pity that subby. Brush Mario, it. take it over. Smack it likey. Hit the subby. First off. Johnny and Christian just just killed it. It's gonna be tough to top them. Yeah, I'm kind of thank doing, you guys. Thank I'm you. I'm going. Oh yeah, it's tough going last. <laughs> I'm gonna kind of do what, what Christian did, put Hal and Cashman to the side. Listen, this is how I felt about the Yankees all off season. I said it was going to be impossible. I know people were pounding the table to trade John Carlos Stanton, to trade possibly Anthony Rizzo or DJ LeMayu. I said there those three, the three grandpas are going to be on the team. No matter what. I, I call them the three grandpas. They're going to be on the team either way. Mario 6, okay. And, li and listen, this is going to go kind of hand-in-hand hand with my guy, Clay Holmes. And I know NYYU as a whole, you get a little stomach ache when Clay Holmes comes into the game. Listen. Uh-oh. There's no listen. listen, there's not going to be a Mariano again. I'm just going to be honest with you, Yankee fan. <laughs> I get you guys want this closer to be 40 for 40 and say it's not going to happen. I think you guys would feel a ton, a ton better about Clay Holmes if the manager, you listen, if the manager were to take Clay Holmes out when the guy's struggling. You yeah. guys know what happened against Cincinnati a couple of years ago. Clay Holmes was the all star and he was still in the game when he was hitting guys. You could totally tell he was erratic. The guy had nothing, but Boone leaves him in the game because he's like, that's our guy. We're oh, going to ride Boone him to manage. Oh, what? And holy I, I, shit. I'm saying, I'm saying, ride or die with that one guy. And then he goes on the Michael K show. He's like, no, we're going to go back to him tonight, even though he wasn't good last night, because that's our guy. I would give him a night at that point and be like, listen, we're going to stay away from you tonight, figure it out with Matt Blake, whatever the control issue was, and then we'll go, go back to you another night. We'll try somebody else. But again, that's my, that's my biggest thing when it comes to, I guess, Clay Holmes and and Aaron Boone, so that's why. I, I can't have, top, you're, I can't you're top have Johnny. Your chance. You're going to have your chance to talk to me about Clay Holmes, you son of a bitch, yeah, because the bullpen's coming up pretty soon. Still, I can't still, wait to talk about Clay Holmes, all right? He's elite, Kev, by the ahead. way. I'm just saying, he's elite. But. Who? <laughs> Clay Holmes. Holmes. Clay Holmes, he's elite. You might be surprised about my take, Mario, but um, all right. So let's start off with, with, with Boone because everybody's going off on Boone. And this is a guy like Mario just said, that Clay Holmes was basically shitting all over Cincinnati and he leaves him in there to figure it out and then plays him the next day. The same manager who played Rizzo the next day after he went 0 for 5 with five fucking strikeouts against the Baltimore uh, Orioles. This is the same manager who, when a guy is hot, sits him because, be because <laughs> it's load management and all this bullshit. I am sick and tired. <laughs> Of this BS with this shit. This is your last year, and this is your last chance, honestly. <laughs> you, 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 have to, you have to, have to get your head out of your ass and manage this team the way the Boons, your dad, your brother, all those all those guys before you, your grandfather, for fuck's sake. Well, how those mm. guys played baseball, get into yep. that mindset. You have to manage the game. As much as the numbers tell you and how much guys are hot or this and that, you still have to manage the fucking game. Oh, he don't believe in hot and cold. Remember, first thing he said as a Yankee manager. He don't believe in hot and cold, but go ahead. Sorry, Kevin. And, and, and this is what drives me nuts about Iron Boone, but I still do believe that there is a possibility to overcome the bullshit and, and, and with the type of team that the Yankees have. Some of the guys, that they, they got dogs in the, in the lineup this year. They do. Dogs. And I think those guys are going to bring out the best in the others as well because this is, this is what the Yankees I, – I, I haven't felt better. The vibes haven't felt better. Since I can't go back as far as Nick Swisher when he first came over, AJ Burnett when 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 the clubhouse was was revamped, right? So mm. I say, listen, Ned Jost made it to a two World Series and won one, and and he's not a great manager. So I, there has right. to be a way yeah, where Boone, where Boone can actually uh, uh uh the team can actually help out Boone in this case. And to everybody's case about Clay Holmes, numbers lie. 
I mean, I'm sorry. Numbers don't lie. Your facts do. Whatever the fuck the saying is. Can somebody? What is it? <laughs> Kevin's heated. Kevin's heated. Close heated. enough. Close I enough. Know. Whatever. Okay. Not, 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 what lie. Lie. Men lie. lie. Men, Men lie. lie. Women lie. Numbers don't. No. Oh, there, you, there, okay. there you go. Thank you, Frank. All right. Okay. Don't let me get. Don't let me get going. All right. You babe, not you. I'm <laughs> talking about the past. Okay. You've been nice. The reason why is because if you go look at Garrett Cole splits, he always gets the yips in August and July. Always towards the end of July and August. If you look at his Cole? ERA in those months, go ahead. I I literally looked it up while everybody was sitting on Clay Holmes. H- Holmes, 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 Holmes. Cole. I thought he said Holmes. Cole. Okay. He sometimes on some years he'll start off a little slow, but after that he is elite in in June. He's elite in May. He's elite in September, and he's looked good in the playoffs. So the, the again the Yankees maybe this year they pick something up because you guys are analytics and talk about numbers, right? So look where others are not fucking looking. You can't just throw a guy out there every single time. You got to look at the at what you have in front of you. This is why I have issues with the numbers because when something goes wrong, it's randomness. It's lucky. It's bad. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. You no. chose the wrong hey, number. Yo. You chose the wrong number. That's the issue. That's we the issue I have. Today. So play Holmes is what we have. The, the Yankees analytics department, because it's not Boone anymore, it's, mm. it's the analytics department, has to figure out who is going to be the closer in August. That's that's my issue. Hell bent on bringing a championship is what he said. <clears throat> hell bent. Well, let's, right. let's, mecca see, let's of baseball. see how hell bent he really is. <laughs> um, but now Thank you guys for getting me fired we... up, though. Thank you, Johnny and, and Christian for getting me fired up. Let's okay, go. Now... Let's cook, Kevin. Let's cook. <laughs> now we get into... The the 2024 real conversation was starting with the New York Yankees offense. Let me answer some super chats. Our guy Joey Bag of Donuts. Oh, oh boy. Boy. take it easy. He says, <laughs> Me and Rizzo are the same age, Mario. Why are you tossing? Why are you an ageist, bro? He's an ageist over can, here. Can he see the baseball? Can he see the baseball? If he, he can see like the he baseball, can see he's looking okay. he's gonna be dangerous. Okay, a little NYYU ageist action. Okay, going on in the chat. Yeah, <laughs> LA Lou. Thank you for becoming a member, brother. We appreciate you. Uh, Alex, my guy, Alex. How you doing, my brother? Smacky to like, like. Hitty to sub sub. El Diablo. Alex says, 2017, Girardi was manager. We almost got a World Series. 2018, Boone comes in, and we are in 2024, and we get swept in ALCS. Something's got to give, and of course, didn't even make the postseason last year. Melanie says, hard to believe Boone comes from a baseball family. I say that all the time. Alex, again, says the lineup needs to be a little bit more consistent. Perfect timing, my guy, because we are talking about the 2024 New York Yankee lineup. And what did we just learn today? We learned that Glaber Torres is going to be leading off tomorrow. I do not know if this is a sign that he's going to be leading off against lefties. And maybe we see Verdugo against righties. I hope that's what they do. We really didn't see that in spring much. But I hope that they're smart enough to do that. Because I want to start with Alex Verdugo. I don't know if you guys feel the same way I do. The I feel like Alex Verdugo, good old Doogie, who, by the way, that white gold or platinum, whatever the hell it has on, looks unbelievable in the Yankees pinstripes, by the way. Rock it all day. Wear looks, it more. Looks more fuego. guy should wear it. But I feel like he's a waste if you bat him 6-7. I don't like it. I feel like it's Andrew Benintendi all over again. You're yep. not getting the reality of why he would make you uh, uh, more successful on the club by being the leadoff guy, at least against righties. I'd be okay with that. Soto? Come on, man. Do we even got to talk about the man? Generational. I pray. I pray tomorrow I'm playing that song twice and I'm dancing around the room during game season and he goes jack job two damn times tomorrow. I think Soto is going to be so damn impactful that a lot of us aren't even understanding how important he's going to be to this club. Aaron Judge, stay on the damn field. But those are the mainstays. I want to talk about the other guys. I want to talk about Austin Wells. I want to talk about Austin Wells. I want to talk about the Yankees bench that greatly got improved today with uh, the signing of Birdie. We all knew it. We've all been saying it. I would like to see a veteran presence, and they really did. I'm not just hyping this up. They got one of the better ones you could get out there. I was calling for Gio Urshela. I was calling for Ahmed Rosario. They didn't happen. Birdie's a better option, in my opinion, than both of those guys because he plays well almost everywhere. And he He plays great second, third. He costs less. And he hits 290. He could play left field. He could hit 290. He had 40-plus stolen bags in 2022. Last year, he had a very, very good season. Little huge action, okay? 
He had a very good season. I'm telling you guys right now, that's projections of 250 <laughs> more runs for this club. I'll say it right now. I believe this is going to be the best offensive Yankees we have seen since 2009. I think this New York Yankees offense is going to be the best offense in the American League if it is handled properly. Verdugo leading off against righties. The guy's fucking actually stealing the bases. Let Anthony Volpe be Anthony Volpe. The swing path has changed. He should hit for a higher average. Hit and run. Lay down bunts with certain guys that, that could potentially help you on that. This, this offense has everything. If Boone does not assist in any way, and I know people are, oh, how you call him Boone this? Because he is the manager at the end of the day, and I don't give a shit. He's the manager. You should be able to, even if a team is fucking you up and a pitcher's on the mound dominating you, you guys should be able to be smart enough to get runs across the board with this type of offense. There's no damn excuse this year. I'll turn it over this time. We're going to go to Christian next. So your point about Verdugo was spot on because it's something I've been saying since the Yankees traded for him is that I feel like he's wasted in like a 6-7 spot. You put him at the top of the lineup. He's going to see pitches. He doesn't strike out. He puts the ball in play. I love him, but they're not obviously maybe they don't want to go lefty lefty. So, you know, if there's a righty on the mound, you might have to switch it up a little bit and bat Soto third. I know it was the old comfort zone, the Yankees over here. They get set in their ways of doing shit, and then they do things completely randomly for no reason. So there is no rhyme. Or, there is no rhyme or reason for why they do anything. But you're right with Ben Benintendi. It was amazing, right? It was it was like, oh, my God. Like, as soon as they put him in a in a position that he, to be successful, he was successful. It was like, go, go figure, right? So... I also think that this team is going to score a lot of runs this year if they're healthy and the two guys, I'm going to take freak accidents out of this because that seems to be the majority of what happens mm. to Aaron judge. Yeah. If Rizzo and Stanton can stay healthy, I like the Yankees chances of scoring a lot of runs this year. And, mm. and the birdie thing today was a good pickup. It keeps Oswaldo Cabrera out of starting lineup, which is always a good thing. So, <laughs> and and man, I just want to be, I just want to see Anthony Volpe take that next step. I know he hit 209 last year or whatever it was, uh, but I want, I want to see him take that next step, learn a two strike approach, learn how to take the ball the other way. When, when you get on base, you know, it's, it's not a sock hop out there. Quit the fucking mm. dancing and just go, mm. you know, <laughs> if you get thrown out, you get thrown out. I know analytics, give you, I don't care. Take risk out there. Especially with the bigger bases, the 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 rules about throwing over, the way guys can, are not allowed to block bases that, this year, it's advantageous to try to take chances on the bases this year. Think outside the box a little bit, create runs. The, the three run home runs are going to come; they're going to be great, but don't rely on them. And I feel mm -hmm. like even great offensive Yankee teams in the past. 10, 15 years have just sat around and waited and waited for that home run. Don't sit around and wait for it. If you can get Volpe on, steal, you know, what do they always say? One to get him over, one to get him in. Burn two outs to score a run. I don't care. Get Score the runs. Get these guys on base. Don't sit around and re, uh, wait for the home run, even though I think they're going to hit their fair share of them this year. Oh, yeah. Johnny? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with a lot of that. Um I think a big thing over the years has been lineup balance. And I think we finally have balance. Oh, yeah. uh, we have a, we have a lot of lefties in there. We have a good amount of righties. Um, obviously a guy like Juan Soto is going to be a huge improvement from what we've had in recent years. Um, I, I really like Verdugo's ability to hit a few doubles. Um, like, like uh, Christian say, that doesn't strike out a lot, puts together a tough at bat. Um, and, and manufacturing runs is a big thing. Another thing Christian said was waiting for the homers. Uh, th those are going to come. I mean, I think this is going to be a top five offense in the league um, minimum. I think that's the floor for this offense, the top five in the league, assuming everyone stays on the field, uh, which is always a big question mark with this organization. But, um, yeah, I think big things are coming. I, I think Rizzo is going to have a bounce back year. I think he can see the ball. Um, he's not – he doesn't have Clint Frazier syndrome, so that's a good thing. Um, Stanton, <laughs> flip a coin, who knows? I mean, he looks better. The – the uh, Mechanical adjustments look like they've been working a little bit in spring, even though he he was hitting against a dead fish lefty. But mm -hmm. if he can if he can get 450, 500 at bats by the grace of God, maybe he can hit 30 homers. Who knows? Uh, obviously, Judge and, and Judge is going to do his thing. Glaber is a professional. 
professional hitter. Um, but I think Austin Wells is going to go 25 homers. You heard it here first. Woo! Uh, the dude has big time power. Mm-hmm. He puts together oh. a, a a mature professional at bat, which is something you don't see with a lot of young guys. He knows what his strike zone is. He knows where he does damage. Um, he waits for his pitch. He doesn't chase a lot. So that's something I'm very excited to see. If he can get 400 ABs, I think 25 homers is a very uh, good possibility for him. Um, and then the level swing with Volpe, something I really like. Um, I'm not a huge uh, lift the ball all the time guy. And um, obviously it didn't work out very well for Anthony Volpe. So I'm glad they had some self-awareness and made that adjustment. Um, he's looked much better. He, I mean, he had a good spring last year too. So I don't think we can really go off of his spring too much. Um, but I think leveling that barrel mm-hmm. and getting it getting it in the zone sooner and staying level through the zone is going to be something that's really going to help him out. And if he goes from early 20s homers to 18 who cares mm. uh, get the ops up um nice. i know i'm gonna get stabbed if i mention batting average in this day and age but <laughs> not i'd here. like to see not maybe here, a 260 not. maybe a 270 <laughs> uh punch a few singles to the infield i mean we don't have to be shooting doubles in the gap hitting hitting porch homers all the time um yeah. take what the pitcher gives you understand your strike zone kind of like what austin wells does and have a mature major league at bat um use your feet don't hit the ball in the air Hit the ball on the ground, use those wheels, steal a base. Um, so those are some things I'd love to see from Volpe, and I think he's going to do a lot of that. Um, but overall, one through nine, I think we have a very complete, balanced order. Um, it's going to give pitchers a lot of problems, especially if Rizzo and Stanton are doing what they're supposed to do. So um, a lot of, to be excited about for sure with this offense. Nice. And we're going to go to Kev. Uh, go ahead, Kev. I'm going to tell you what this oh, offense is. Oh, I'm going to tell you what this, <laughs> this offense is meaning in the Wet Panther in that box. I'm going to tell you what Juan Soto and Judge, oh, my God, I can't wait to see this offense, man. I'm going to tell you this. I need Volpe to see some bags. I need him to stop being like a one-legged cat in the sandbox. What the fuck is wrong with all this hopping? All right? Um, Because Christian was talking about his hopping stuff. I think they're teaching them in the minors, though, by the way. But, yeah, man, I'm so excited. I have to let Percy out for that. I, I'm so excited about this offense. I think all of us are. We can't wait for it. Um, Up and down the lineup is just way – it's completely different from what was last year. I think we had what two guys over 700 OPS. It was really yeah, bad. it was terrible. Uh, yeah. uh, Glaber was, really and Glaber Glaber was our best hitter. Glaber, yeah. Glaber. There was, there was one moment. To our ass, okay. Peep, I have a, a piece of Manetti band aid. There was nice. one. <laughs> there was one. One game. Me and Mario looked up at at our at the Yankees lineup, and there was two guys hitting over 700. We're like, yo, this is the most disgusting thing we ever seen in our lives. And to see, and for you to get Soto, to get Verdugo, to now Let's add go. add Birdie, right? Uh, oh, is it Bertie? Bertie. Yeah, Birdie. sorry. He's a, ta- a little Italian, okay? okay? A little Bertie. To okay. add Birdie at the end there. So now ha- we don't have to see Cabrera. And as much as Cabrera <clears throat> is great in the, outf- in the outfield, in the infield, and he's, and he's really there because he can play every position. All right, he's flexible. No Diddy. Um, to that, I say <laughs> that he needs to stop. Hey, yo. He needs to stop hitting righty. Hopefully, he listens to us and he starts focusing on hitting lefty. And I guarantee you, Cabrera will be a great utility infielder just hitting mm-hmm. off the left side. But listen, I'm not. All you guys hit it on the nail. I just wanted to reiterate some of the little things. But I, I'm, I'm, I can't be more excited to see this offense right now. And we're gonna see it, Menyana Francis. Let us know what you think, man. By the way, how's the uh, the 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 the, the, the thing uh, kicked in? You feeling good over there? I'm feeling really good right now. All right, I'm good. telling you right now. I, I, I can't, He's even slurry. I can't, I, really I can't give I can't give y'all the ingredients of the tea that I have, but I'm feeling pretty good. Right now. Uh, I gotta I tell think you, there's a little. He might have he might have did a peat during all all rise. Have a little sample <laughs> in the coffee, okay? All right, let us know what you're thinking. Listen, man. Um, a lot has been said already. I hope I'm not stealing Mario's point because I know this is his guy. But uh, I got to say, and I probably said this already, but I think that Glaber Torres is in for a monster year. Oh, there, shit. there is no more. There's no there's no better time for him to be as motivated as he seems to be right now. He's going into mm-hmm. his contract year. He knows that the whispers and the rumors are that he's not coming back. He's made it a point to put it out there that he wants to be back, that he wants to stay and he's also done probably the smartest thing that he could do in making sure that he became Juan Soto's bestie. So, mm, bro, he took my point. Right but... now, I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, right great now, minds, great minds, <laughs> great, great minds, minds. You know what I'm saying? But right now, I look at Glaber Torres, and I gotta be honest with you. For as hard as I've been on the on the kid, he looks like he is finally fucking locked all the mm. way in, and he's I dialed. feel like. 
because he's not being spoken about, because there's so much else going on, he's Thanks going to be a sneaky good player in this freaking mm. lineup. And we've seen it before. We've seen Glaber have these hot streaks and stuff like that, but I feel like this year is going to be different. So I think GT is going to be a really big part of this lineup, if not Damn. one of the catalysts for this lineup. Damn. Yeah. Mario, go ahead, man. He he made a point to steal to steal your uh your take that you might have to steal one of his grandmothers. I don't know. No, it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> Listen, as much as the chat hates him, man, you know, Soto and Glaber, just besties, man. Ever since he got <laughs> traded, they've been clicking. So maybe, you know, Soto, when he's talking about the contract, he's like, Listen, I need my boy GT to stay around. I know we got a ton of infield prospects, but GT's my guy. But well, he me madre. I wanted to talk about Glaber <laughs> Torres leading off. <laughs> I've said this numerous times. On a World Series team, Glaber mm. Torres is your six or seven hitter. Mm. I need true. Glaber. I need Glaber this year, selfishly, and for the Yankees. I feel like if we're talking about them in the World Series, to rack up those RBIs. I yes. need him hitting mm. with guys on base. I don't want Absolutely. him leading off. As much as I love the guy, I don't want him leading off, and I don't want Anthony Volpe leading off to start the season at least. And I know this might not be a popular take because everybody's like. The kid from Jersey, I want him leading off. No, he's ready. He's taking the year two leap. Mm. Can we give him, and I know this is not a popular take, 60 to 80 games. 100%. Just let the kid figure it out from the nine hole. No matter a DJ injury, like I said, I said it was going to happen at some point in the year. Didn't matter if DJ got hurt. I need Volpe to stay in the nine hole. It, again, now DJ hurt. They want to put Glaber. They'll put Glaber or Verdugo. Works for me. That's fine. And I want to talk about DJ a little bit. Not banking on DJ LeMayhew anymore mm. at this point. I joke around with him being one of the grandpas. I love the birdie pickup. Um, his his um just him playing third, short, and second. Love that from left him. Field too. Okay, he could play a little bit of left field. I saw his OPS last year and his average. So if you're a fan of either, I think a lot of fans are gonna like John Birdie. Um, so I'm definitely excited for him. Not banking on DJ, especially with the foot injury. He hurt the same foot that I believe was hurt last year. So I'm like, I'm like, come on, brother. I mean, what are we gonna He's do? He's not a small on, guy brother? either. And another MRI Friday too, so we don't even know what this is gonna come out. So. Yeah, we don't know. We... Go ahead, Mike. Yeah. No, no, we don't know what's gonna happen with him. And I wanted to mention this. Saw somebody mention in the chat: hungry guys trying to get paid. Verdugo, my guy, GT and Soto. All these guys are trying to mm. get paid. This is probably Glaber Torres' only opportunity. For him to get a big contract. And I know there's whispers yeah. of him being willing to take a pay cut for the Yankees. We will see. I don't know if that's going to be on the table for him. Because there's a lot of guys coming off the books. And the Yankees do have a ton of infielders. But Verdugo, we don't know how long he's going to be here. Maybe he gets flipped at the deadline for some pitching. Again, we don't know. But all these guys have something to prove. And I think that's going to be huge for the Yankees. Those three guys. And one more thing. My fault. I know I'm kind of... Going on a little ramble Go right ahead. now. But we got some over and unders right after this for the offense. Austin Wells, <clears throat> love Johnny's point, man. And I this is maybe a little bit of a hot That's take. About, but, yeah. I think at some point he's going to be hitting fifth in the order. Late I in the agree, seven. actually. I agree, I, actually. I think he's going to be hitting fifth I in agree. the order. Love, listen, Rizzo, I'm hoping he could see the ball, the concussion symptoms, all that's gone away. But I'm telling you, man, Austin Wells, love what Johnny said. Professional at bat. And I and also beyond the plate, he's not as bad as we think he is. So, like, so, so that's good for me. We, that that we was have, a narrative, yeah. We have some over unders coming up. I got a couple of announcements to make. We got a couple of uh, plenty of a lot of super chats here to go over real quickly. Uh, but announcement: ten o'clock, which is twenty nine minutes away. We're gonna announce the two winners of the NYYU NYYU Day tickets. We'll announce that. Get to a couple of super chats. Then for the offense, I got some over unders for you guys. Chat, I want you guys to join in on that also. LA Lou says, um, I say the problem is Hal Steinberg. I lived through his daddy's era. And while he may have been a pain and a jerk, that son of a bitch wanted the win, damn it. We won. I don't get that from Hal. Where is Hal? Jeff J says, I want the Yankees to lift the World Series trophy more than any other result. Yanks win. We keep Soto, but Cashman stays. Fishman stays. Baboon stays. The fish rots from the head, and that's trash can. Anthony Garcia, surprising Boone, isn't having Rizzo lead off. Connor O'Neill says, Soto and Judge hitting 50 <laughs> bombs each. Rizzo, 30. Volpe hitting 265 and stealing 40 bags. First time Boone said Soto. He's telling Hal, if you want to resign me, fire him, and I'm here every day. 
Eddie Snap says, can't wait for Volpe and Birdie. Uh, Absolute Speed Demons gives the catchers nightmares. Anthony Medina says, what up, guys? Oh, Listen to the U, crushing it tonight and spitting nothing but facts. I think the pitching, in my opinion, may surprise us, and the hitting will be absolutely fire. NYYU is going to kill it in 2024. Uh, Acevedo says, Verdugo versus righties. Judge, Soto, Stanton, Rizzo, Torres, Wells, Birdie versus lefties, Volpe. Hill and Beater share starts. Uh, Crackle Nuts, hot take. Clay Holmes will have huge year. He is also a free agent. Uh, closers get paid. Over-unders. Offense only. I'm going to say one of them. All we do, go around the horn. Quick answer, over-under. Chat, join us. Juan Soto, 400-plus on base percentage. Over. Kev. And I, I'm, I, can you skip me right quick? I Sorry, I got something right quick. Sorry. No problem. Mario. My bad. Over. Christian. Over. Johnny. Over. Francis. Over. It's an over two for Kev. I just know. No, it's an under. No, it's not. Wait, I got a real good point. It's a fucking over. You crazy? <laughs> I was about to say, what are we doing over here? Juan Soto, 35 plus home runs. I got the over. Kev. Over. Mario. He's never hit over 35 homers. In no, I'm getting over. Sorry. That was terrible. <laughs> that, that was terrible. Yeah. Over. <laughs> Mary. I mean, not Mary. Oh, my God. Francis. <laughs> over. Johnny. Over. I think he hit 37. That's 37? Why okay. A little 37 action. Aaron Judge. 50 home runs. Mm. I say, God, I honestly, I, I, for some reason, I want to say under. I don't know why, but I'm going over. I think Judge would be fine. Uh, I say, I say, even though he's looked terrible in spring, I go over. Uh, Kev. Uh, I'm gonna go over to if 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 he's there, man. I, I I find it hard to believe he's not gonna catch on when he sees Soto hitting bombs and it, it just and he's always good, bro. Like j Judge finds a way, so I'm going over. Mario, I don't know if he's gonna be playing over 150 games this year like we think get, he is. So get out of here. I'm sorry. That's I'm my have concern. To go, I'm gonna slap you, bro. Go, I'm gonna have to go under, but we'll we'll, we'll see. Uh, games played, I think that oblique might be an issue still. But listen, if he turns There's it no up tomorrow. Oblique. Uh, they no were oblique. selling it in Tampa. Remember, I was going to buy it. it. They said Aaron uh, Judge. No I don't There's know. No I don't know, man. He would have been out a lot longer if, the, if it was troubles with the oblique. That's my that's my opinion. You right. might be right. Uh, Christian, ready? You are you ready for this? No shit. He's gonna break sixty three. He's gonna say breaking the record. Damn! Can you imagine? Holy shit! The, wait, the real record? The real all record right, or, all right, all right. or his record? Stop Get over record. yourself. Get over yourself. <laughs> Um, uh, Francis, uh, I'm going over. Damn, Johnny. Yeah, I think over. He'll be a little over 50. All right. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll throw this one around the room real quick for Judge. Just really, really fast. Yes or no? Are you concerned with Judge at all? Is there any concern in your mind right now whatsoever, Kev? No, I think the mid spring beat up is just like something they were trying <laughs> to just baby him a little bit. All right, Chris. So he was. Yeah, I'm not worried about him. Mario, you yeah, are. I'm I'm, I'm worried. I'm with you. I'm a little. I'm a little worried. I'm not fully convinced. A Johnny. little. A little. Just gotta see him, Johnny. Yeah, yeah I don't, I'm a little concerned. I don't even know why I'm concerned. Uh, I don't think he's injury prone. It's just there's always some freakish bullshit that happens with him, and I don't know. I've I've always got a, a healthy small bit of concern about him. I don't, yeah, hit, hit sixty again. Just make me sound like an idiot. Mary, you got something? Let me say one thing because Hirsch mentioned in the chat. And I haven't really mentioned it on Bronx or nothing either. And I know we don't want to talk about it, but I'm a little bit worried with that toe in center field. Him okay, playing, the toe? him playing, a, I'm not saying he's going to play 150 games there, but mm. he's going to be playing a ton there. We don't know when Dominguez or a Jones call up. We don't know when that's going to happen. And he's going to need his days off. And we know the Yankees do a good job of, you know, making sure that happens. But I'm not crazy about him playing a ton of center field. All right. I, I know we're going to hit, but. Especially with the Christian. Um, yeah. I'm going to say no. Not worried. Yeah. No. Okay. And you're over. You did your over. Oh, you said over already. Okay. Yeah. This over. is a good. This is a fun one. DJ LeMayu, 80 games. I'm saying under. 80 Kev. games played? 80 games played. For who? I'm sorry. DJ LeMayu. Oh, no. Over. I think he'll play right. over 80. A little over. Mario? Like maybe like 95. Much. I'm not a fan. He'll probably go over. Probably like 91, yeah. 87. Yeah. All right, Christian. 
Yeah, eighty's a little too low for me, but but uh, I don't think he's playing more than like one twenty this year. Johnny. DJ LeMahieu is playing 162 games this year. You heard it here first. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm kidding. He, I, I'll say over just because Boone is a loyal guy. As soon as as soon as the guy is feeling a little bit better, they're gonna bat him lead off every damn day, even though he's slow as shit. So I think over um, just because of Boone's loyalty. And Francis. Yeah, I'm gonna go over. If you would put it at 100, I would have struggled more. But 80, I think he'll get over 80. All right, we'll see. Uh, John, uh, Aaron Rodgers says, your NYYU fam, let's go. Opening day is manana. Better believe it. Stanton, 30 home runs over under. I'm sorry, I am not sold. I still have the under on that. Kev. Fuck it, I'll take the fucking over. I knew you would. You said he's going to hit 40 plus. I remember. I'm going to take the over. Christian. You know what I'm going to say. John Carlos Stanton, SMD towards 2024. Bam, 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 bam. Let me get the horns. <laughs> With Mario? a good finger. Are, are you saying 30 homers or 30 games played? <laughs> <laughs> That's he's a comedian, wild. son of a bitch. Yo. Put him in the fucking bench. Get him hey, out of here. Come on. He's accountable, but under. Under, okay. Uh, Francis. Yeah, I have him right there between 30 and 35 home runs. I think he's going to do it. All right. Uh, Johnny. Yeah, like Francis said, I'm... I'm thinking 35. Um, that would be best case scenario, I, but I do think he's over 30. Uh, he's he played a, a lot less games than usual last year, and he's still what mid 20s. So yeah, I yeah. mean, the guy's gonna he's gonna run into his fair share if he just stay on the field. All right, and he did and that with gonna, that lineup too last year. Correct. We're yeah. gonna go protection. over to the Italian stallion himself, Anthony Rizzo. 110 games played. I'm telling you right now, Anthony Rizzo is going to have a fucking season. The Italian mm -hmm. is back. Let me tell you, he got a chip on his shoulder. He ate some yeah. pasta vazul tonight. I know for a fact he did. Dip, dip, dip the Italian bread in the sauce afterwards, and he's ready to fucking play ball this year. 110 plus. I got the over, damn it. Big year. You know why, too? He knows there's no first base and is looking for a spot. He wants to stay a Yankee. He wants another contract. He wants to be a part of Soto Judge for years to come. Anthony Rizzo wants it this year. He wants it this year. I'm telling you, he's going to make up for what happened last year. I got the over. Kev? Um, He does have a club, op club option next year, Pete. So, I mean, the Yankees, if he has a great season, the Yankees might pick that up. So, I I'm going to say over. I think that big break that he got last year, we see how he looks this year. So, I mean, I think I got to go over. Led the team in batting average in spring, too, by the way. Hit almost 400. Uh, Mario? Over, just like Kevin mentioned, team option. And by the way, Look at his stats of April and May before Tatis injury. Should have been the starter yeah. for the yeah. AL. A year Great older, point. but I'm, I'm going over for games played. Great Season point, bet. Christian. Season bet. Heard that he's putting Broccoli Rob in his drock strap, Let's so go. He's, he's, he's good to go. Uh, yeah, I like I like Rizzo a lot this year. So over 110 for sure. Okay, a little over 110. Johnny? Yeah, I think he'll definitely be over 110. I mean, you talk about a dude who's got a perfectly made swing for the short porch. To pull everything possible, it's Anthony Rizzo. If he doesn't have uh, Clint Frazier syndrome, he's going to hit 30-plus bombs. So I think he's going to play a lot, and he's going to do pretty well. Francis? I'm right there with all you guys, man. I'm hitting the over, and I got to say, bring keep that two-strike approach, and I hope he makes that shit contagious because that's what we need. We, yeah. got a, we got a funny one here from Connor O'Neill on the Super Chat, but I got to ask you guys that. Over or under... Three games, Pete's first rant on Boone. <laughs> I'm, gonna be, I'm going, you know what? Three it games. might actually. Three Let innings, yeah, something. bro. I'll tell you this. It might be under because they're playing Houston, Houston. in Houston. Yeah. It's a little exactly. concerning. It's a little scary with some of the guys, but whatever. We don't, we don't got to. We don't got to go around the room on that. I appreciate you, Connor. Um, A couple of more I still got. Jay Station says, have you seen the guy disrespecting Volpe on X? I don't think we got to talk about that nonsense, nah, to be he's honest. I think you know nah, how we feel about it. Michelino, Michelino says, DJ will spend time in the sleep pods, Kevin style. Okay. Going to Glaber Torres. <laughs> I got two on Glaber. I'll give you guys them at the same time. 280 batting average and 30 home runs. I am buying in on Glaber. I am going to say the over on both. I think Glaber Torres is going to show up and show out this year. I'm more concerned about the 280 average. I think it might be in the 270s, maybe right below that. But mm -hmm. I really believe he's going to pop 30 home runs this year. Kev. No, God, please, no. 
<laughs> I, listen, I'll take the I'll take the over on the 280. I think he's going to have a much better season hitting wise. I don't think he hits 30 home runs, but I do think he hits 28, 27. Mm. But I think his average is going to be a lot better this year. Him seeing time at leadoff behind those two caballos. <laughs> telling you. A lot of fastballs. Mar Mario. A lot, of, a lot of balls that go fast. Damn, I, I, you're kind of setting the bar like high because I wanted just 275, nah, you don't, 25, you can't 20, you can't 25 homers and 80 RBIs. But listen, man, two, like the average 280, listen, keep going to the right side. I'll, I'll take the over. Damn, 30 homers? Yeah. He, he's trying to get the he's trying to get the bag. So I'll take the over for both. Only oh, for that shit. reason. I'll take the over for both. What that's my guy. I have to. Christian. I think we saw Glaber Torres really mature midway through the I agree. through the that's season a, last I year. Agree. I, I agree. think that something just clicked with him last year that I really like seeing. I don't I don't know if this sounds crazier. I don't want him hitting 30 home runs this year. I think he's a much better hitter when he's trying to go gap to gap. Uh, he'll run into mm. his home runs, but I'll go over 280, but under 30. All right. Uh, Francis. Yeah, I'm I'm in lockstep with Christian. I think I could see if he's going to get a lot of those games at leadoff, I can definitely see him hitting over 280. But the home runs uh, probably around 25, 26, 27. And that's exactly where I want him. All right, Johnny. Yeah, I agree. I think he can definitely hit better than 280. Um, Homer's probably like 28, like uh, like Christian said, when he's shooting the gaps, when he's willing to go the other way and punch a single with two strikes. I think that's the best version of Glaber we can get. Um, I mean, he he hits homers over the short portion right on accident. So if he can yep. just stay in that mode and and continue to do that, it's going to be real good for this lineup, and I think he's going to have a great season. All right, we got one. I'm going to combine these this last over under, but first we got a couple of super chats. Uh, Michelin, and, uh, Red Michelin is right. Kai Malay says, who's our backup first baseman with DJ out? Oswaldo Cabrera right now would be the guy. Uh, Vinny Oof. says, over under, 42 and a half different lineups used. Yeah, we Ugh. could definitely, that that you might be on to something there. Connor O'Neill says, who plays more games for the Yankees, Stanton or the Martian? I'm going to have to go ahead and say Stanton on that one. I don't know if you everybody agrees so, on that. Anyway. Does anybody say to Martian? No. No. What is okay. because he's what not going to be back until halfway. I'll yeah, say so this. I'll say what, miss him a long would time. it surprise you no. if it was the – No, exactly. No. So. <laughs> no, it wouldn't shock me. Here's the over-under. I'm going to combine these two together. Volpe and Wells. Volpe hits over 250, over-under. Wells hits over 20 homers. I'm taking the under on Volpe, the over on Wells. Uh, let's start with Johnny. I'm going to say over, over. Nice. I think Volpe's swing change is really going to lead to him having, I mean, more consistent contact. He's going to punch a lot of base knocks through the infield. He's going to beat out some infield singles. So I think that can definitely help his average, especially he's going to, he's going to be at the bottom of the order. He's going to be what pitchers are going to see as a, maybe someone they can sneak a fastball by. And I think he can hit them. So I, I like the, I like him on that. And I think Wells goes way over 20. Nice. Uh, Mario. Yeah, I think Volpe hits around 245, and I don't think that's a bad year for him that's at all. That, that, that is a huge step forward. Again, I don't yeah. want to shoot for the stars. Like you said to everybody last year, Pete, people were like, nah, he's going to be hitting 280. Look how he's doing in spring no, training. No, no, no. Hump the brakes. He still has to get adjusted to the swing, so we're going to see what happens there. And, and Wells, uh, Wells the over. We're big Wells guys here. so Christian. I got to start questioning what Anthony Volpe is as a baseball player if he can't hit 250 this year. I'm just being honest with you. That's my That's opinion good, on him. That's a bad point. That's a good point. Uh, so, for my own mental sanity, considering everything the Yankees passed on for him, I'm taking the over on 250. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, you know what? You heard it here first, okay? I had it first. Don't oh, fuck. shit. You sons of bitches are gonna steal it from me, not you guys. You guys, <laughs> you guys, you guys are already stealing everything. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> we're, this, we're thieves, okay. okay. This is gonna, this is gonna pop up somewhere else. You. Okay. So now you got me with the, the 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 stuttering. Okay, okay. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Let the mustache ride. Okay. Let the mustache ride. Two over twenty home runs for sure for Austin Wells. So remember, that's the catchphrase. Let the mustache ride. It's gonna catch on. Let the mustache ride. LB okay, go. Okay, make it a shirt. Okay. Make it a shirt. Okay. A t-shirt action. All right. Uh Francis. 
Uh, I definitely can see the over 20 for, for Wells. I agree with everything we've said about Wells so far, especially mm. with Vanya's point about him having those professional ABs. Yep. The, the point about Volpe, I think, is that he needs consistency in where he's hitting in this lineup. True. If they keep him at the bottom of the lineup, I promise you that with the change in his swing path, he is going to do a lot more damage because good things happen when you put the ball in play and when you're Bingo. batting. At the bottom of the lineup, I tell you this, pitchers look not to completely take off 7, 8, and 9, but they try to get through 7, 8, and 9 by pitching to contact mm-hmm. so that they can focus a little bit more on the 1, 2, 3, you know, those guys. So yeah. Volpe is going to see a lot of pitches that he can put in play. If he keeps the mm-hmm. bat level and doesn't regress like he did last year, right, he, he kind of did something different and had a decent August. And then in September he regressed and had like the worst month of the season. If he doesn't regress to his old ways, I, I can definitely see him, you know, 240 something, maybe a little bit yeah. over 250, but I, I think Mario said it 245 or something like I'm good with that. Yeah. That's, that's honestly where I have him in the two forties, which by all means is like is a tremendous improvement. Yeah. Uh, so Kev. 40 points basically. Yep. Are you yeah. guys, said some tremendous points and I'm just gonna to add to Francis because he just said about him being in the ninth spot for Volpe okay it's 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 huge but also is they might think about they say that hitting in a nine hole is like another leadoff hitter for that reason and I don't think you want to face judge um a a judge and Soto and and Glaber putting putting Volpe on so I think they're gonna attack the, the strike zone with him and I think he's gonna do very well so I'm actually taking the over on Volpe um, I'm thinking that he's going to see a lot of pitches, uh, a lot that he can handle, and um, he's going to be much more relaxed where he doesn't have to. Like last year was a big year for him because he's a starting mm. shortstop because all this other stuff. Um, so I'm taking the over on that, and I'm taking the over and I'm bigote. There is no way that man, that man eating mango and mofongo in New York in the Bronx. <laughs> he ain't hitting 20, 20 home runs. He is hitting 20 home Let's runs. Let's go. That's absolutely my guy, man. Mary, you got a point? Yeah, I was just going to say this since we're talking about Volpe. I can't do the OPS for four Yankees that are – under 700 or at like mm. 703 705 710 i can't have four guys in the lineup like that and i don't know right. i know volpe is not going to be like that this year but man if the ops could be like 750 maybe 740 from the nine hole man hitting 245 i'll take that it's a big yeah, improvement from last year we got a super chat by rob he goes wells over 20 and rookie of the year volpe just shy of 250 so yeah. very valid points by the way too if people didn't know this Luis Heal is still a rookie, too. So Luis yeah. Heal's starting. He, you never know. I mean, Luis Heal could put together a, a stupid season, and, and we'll see what happens. Guys, we are 10 minutes away from announcing. I don't want to wait for that, though. I want us to continue to move on. But around 10, maybe midway through our conversation on the rotation, which we're getting into right now, we will announce the two winners of the NYYU Day tickets. But on top of that, another thing I want to say, guys, we have over 400 people in here the entire time. We are, we are only at 228 likes. I want 400 likes today. I want 400 likes. You might be in live. Mm. X out of the live chat and hit the thumbs up and bring the live chat back up if you're on your phone. If you're on a computer, just hit the little thumbs up. It's right there for you. It truly helps the channel out a ton. So thank you guys for that. Uh, let's get right into the big conversation. I think this is the one a lot of us have been waiting for because there might be the mo- no, some of the most question marks here on what could happen in this rotation. You see the three men that I listed right there, Carlos Rodon up front, Luis Heal, and Marcus Stroman. I don't know why, but I feel like at least two or three, two of the three of those guys are going to be key for this team. Garrett Cole being out, best case scenario is we're hearing maybe June, right? That would be probably best case scenario. I think that's fair to say. Yeah. The current rotation we know is Nestor Cortez, Carlos Rodon, Marcus Stroman, uh, Clark Schmidt, and Luis Hill is the way they, they started the season. I look at the rotation, and I think a lot of us have said it early on in our, in our first on the first topic of conversation we had. I think it has a chance to be much better than we think, or it could be an absolute nightmare. And that's the scariest thing to think about because nobody has enough depth for multiple starters going down and Garrett Cole being out. Nobody has that. I am going to ride a little higher on this rotation. Everybody knows I believe so much in Carlos Rodon having a bounce back year. 
I'm not sitting here saying the guy's going to have a 225 ERA. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying he's going to have a 310 ERA, a 315 ERA. But if he could keep that ERA under four, I would be the most excited person in the room. And I believe Carlos Rodon has a chance to do it. Do I think there's going to be games when he gets smacked around? I do. I do. I think there's something still there. I don't know what it is. I know Johnny thinks it could be the back. Uh, it could very well be the back. We haven't seen the 99. We've seen 97. We've typically seen 95, 96, the highest on a consistent basis. But it's also been your 93s and 94s. And he's also mm-hmm. mixed in a, a very nice cutter. I, I want to believe he, he has something to prove. I want to believe that he's angry. I want to believe that he expects to be a big part of this team. And with Garrett Cole out, we're looking for him to step up. And I need him to. My biggest concern in the rotation is Nestor Cortez. My biggest concern is Nestor Cortez. I'll, I'll sit here in front of you guys right now and tell you, I have zero faith in Nestor Cortez having a strong season for the Yankees. And I'm talking strong as an under four ERA. I would be shocked, shocked if Nestor Cortez put up a solid season. I just do not believe in him. I love Luis Heal. How long is he going to go? Marcus Stroman, I think it's going to be pretty damn good for the Yankees. Even today in that video when the guy was freestyling, I don't know if you guys saw that. Marcus, they were like, name me a word that I could throw into the freestyle. I'm going to touch every word. Marcus Stroman said championship. That's all he's thinking. It's all Marcus Stroman is thinking about is winning. He came, remind you, he's walking into the Lions then, not the other way around. He's yeah. decided, I'm either going to get fucking ripped up or I'm going to come out of this shit looking like the hero. And I think Marcus Stroman is going to be the friggin' hero this year. I really do. I'm riding high with Marcus Stroman. And Clark Schmidt, he's going to surprise you sons of bitches out Hell there. Hell yeah. You, I Kevin. think Clark Schmidt is going to have a good <laughs> fucking season. I think a lot of people are shitting on him. I think a lot of people don't believe. I think some people think the best was last year. I don't. I think this guy is going to be a solid pitcher for the Yankees, a number four, number five, whatever it is. I think that's going to be the case. I think Will Warren's going to be there. I think Clayton Beater may be so important. Of course, he's in a different role. I don't know if Chase Hampton sees it, but Will Warren will see some time, I'm sure. And all I got to say is, Garrett Cole, get your fucking ass back because we (laughs) need you this year. We friggin' need you. Carlos Rodon, do not let me down. I don't want to look like an asshole here, but I am putting... My, I said it on my, I'm putting my life on the line for you, you son of a bitch. You hear me? Ashley, get your man right. I'm putting my life on the line for him. I love that damn man, damn it. And he's going to do it. He is going to do it. Carlos Rodon, SMD Tour 2024. Christian, I took something else from you, okay? Oh, We're going to go next to <laughs> Francis Lee. Go ahead. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I, you got me super hyped there. I got I got to say, listen, with Strowman, that's... He's 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 my fucking guy in this rotation. Um, honestly, I know that when he got signed, it was to mix reviews. There was a lot of people saying he has half the fan base blocked and all that shit. I don't care about any of that shit. Okay, I care that he showed up and he looked apart since day one. He's posting shit from day one. You can tell that mentally he is in probably the best space that he's been at in his career. He put up a post today. Feeling like saying that he felt almost like it was his, it was, it was, he was going into his rookie season. That's exactly what I want to hear from him. Cause that kind of feeling, that kind of excitement, when you get that feeling back almost 10 years into your career, that's, that's a mark of somebody who's about to go off. And I think Strowman is going to be the guy, especially while Garrett Cole is out, to carry the load for this rotation. I think early on, you might see some shorter outings. That's not uncharacteristic of him, but they're going to be quality outings. And I think we're going to be very happy handing the ball to Stro every fifth day. And you will best believe that you're going to see your boy Francis rocking a do-rag for Stro every fifth day on Stro Let's Day. Let's go. I that's might what do it do. on game season, okay? Hey, listen, y'all already know, bro. At the U, this is what we do. Stro's my guy. I'm rocking with him. He's the X Factor. And I just want to throw a quick shout out to Heal. Can't wait to see what he does in the bigs. Huge, huge, huge. Johnny. Ooh, where do I start? Okay, Nestor. 
Guy cannot pitch inside the righties. I've been on this since the middle of last year. Yep. There's a dead fish lefty. You cannot be throwing 92 mile an hour fastballs and not establish the inside part of the plate. That's going to be a big problem if you can't bust that cutter in. When you pitch in, you got to miss way in. You can't miss to the middle of the plate. That's when trouble happens, and he tends to miss middle a lot. So until he can fix that, who knows? I know his shoulder has been an issue too. So uh, my, I mean, he had a good year in 2022. If he is anything close to that, I'll be doing backflips. I don't even know how to do backflips, but I'll do backflips. Um, <laughs> Carlos Rodon, I mean, just like Pete, I mean, I stuck my neck out for the dude last offseason. I was rooting so hard for him. I watched him all 2022 and watched him throwing a billion miles an hour past all these dudes. Um, if he can sit around 95 and he can mix in that cutter, slider, curveball, um, hit his spots, I think he can be successful. We've seen during stretches in the spring where he's had success. The velo has ticked up a little bit. He's He's been getting outs. He's been racking up a lot of strikeouts. So honestly, if he can be – ERA could be in the, in the low fours, I'd be very happy with that. Anything yeah. under four – I'm enthralled. It's going to be amazing. Um, let's see, Clark. I think Clark might Clark and Stroman might be the two best starting pitchers in this rotation. Um, I think Clark took a huge step last year, logging a bunch of innings. Uh, he's had sinkers up to 96 miles an hour in spring this year. That's no fun for anyone to hit, especially with the spin rate he has on his breaking ball. Um, his the stuff plays. He's got a great changeup too. So um, definitely something you look forward to seeing out there. Um, Stroman, he doesn't have to throw a hundred to beat you. He's, he changes speeds. He's got good speed in the slider. He's got a little split change. He's got a sinker. He's got a lot of good things. So I'm very excited for Stroman. Um, in 2017, when he stepped up for the WBC championship and he, he dropped, he, oh, yeah. he took his nuts out and dropped them on the mound out there against Puerto Rico and the biggest stage of that whole tournament in Dodger stadium. And he almost threw a damn no hitter. So the guy, yep. the guy's not afraid of the spotlight. He accepts the challenge. And that's something I've always liked about him. He's a bulldog. And then Luis Hill, honestly, who knows how long he'll be in the rotation? I don't I don't know if he can hold up. Nobody knows if he can hold up. But while he's out there, blow 100, 98 to a hundo, bring your nasty shit. Cause we don't know if we don't know if he'll be in the rotation next week or in three months. So <clears throat> while you're up there, bring your best stuff. Throw that nasty slider, change up, throw a hundred, get out there and act like you're the ace. He's he's got the best stuff in the rotation. So if mm -hmm. he's on, he's gonna be no a doubt. tough assignment, especially for a fifth starter. So um, I think there's some upside to this rotation. There's a chance it could be a little bit better than people are thinking. Um, I know I've been throwing tantrums on Twitter and shit because I wanted Montgomery, who yeah. was going to eat 170 innings. He's going to he's got a sub three ERA in the in the playoffs. That's a guy you can pay 25 million, punt, plug right in there. He's familiar with the Bronx. He's not afraid of the crowd. Something I really wanted, but um, we've got guys like Beater, we've got Warren, we've got uh, Weaver, Poteet, some guys who have decent stuff who can lock some innings. So. I'm not super afraid of of guys being overly spent or having to throw 150, 170 each in the rotation. But um, overall, um, I think it's so-so. I think there's a lot of room to improve from last year, and I'm excited to see how it plays out. No doubt. Uh, let's go to Kev next. And then, guys, right after right after Kev, Mario, and Christian goes, we're going to do the giveaway. Okay, Kev. Um, damn, I, there's a lot of fucking – shit on Nestor for your opening day starter. Jesus Christ, he could have said no. <laughs> but the, 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 this panel, the way they're shitting on him, God damn, can I, can I get some love from my highly of brother over here, from my people from Miami? Listen. Hey, I'm Cuban too. I said, That's how you know I've, I've mean, I mean it. Well, that shit. By heart. Um, I know that we were talking about this earlier, Johnny, that we would prefer that Nestor be lucky than good. Yeah. And mm. and there were times mm. where, where, where he would get into, into jams and he would somehow get out of it. Yep. Now, with the defense that the Yankees have behind them this year, I think another year with the with the pitch clock, him having to have a full spring, having that brief last year, I think you're going to see a much better Nestor than what you saw last year. And as much as do I do I trust him? No, but I just really need him to be good for two months, like I said. Yeah, That's all I really need him to mm -hmm. go all in these two That's months until Cole gets us here. And for you guys who are shitting on him and he can't get righties out, Righty's hit. I, I I believe I just checked. Righty's hit two sixty five on him, and and Clark lefty's hit uh fucking three oh five. So Clark is worse against lefty than Nestor is against righty. So I mean, I can hit two sixty five off Nestor. <laughs> so, so yeah, I'm kidding. Um, sit, sit, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Sit, uh, kidding, sit, uh, sit on the cutter. Sit on the cutter. Trust me, you probably could. Yep. Sit on the hey, cutter. That's what the rest of the league. Dude. Sit on the cutter. No, I'm just saying that the numbers are there. You guys can look at it. The splits are there in baseball reference. Um, I'm not taking anything away from Schmidt. Let's move to Schmidt now. I do believe that that year helped him a lot. My main issue, and if, if you guys didn't feel the way I did the first two months, I don't know how, this guy couldn't get out of the third inning for the first month. Like, mm -hmm. he couldn't. 
So that was taxing the bullpen as much as you guys wanted to see him out there. Um, but I do think that this year under his belt has helped him a lot. We were there in the Atlanta game. He got smacked by rookies. Smacked. But then went inside, guess had a shot of Gatorade, refreshed, came out, and struck out like seven in the next two innings. He has that potential to have shutout stuff. His off speed is very, very good. Um, so I am excited to see Clark Schumann. I do think he pitches to a right under or right right around four ERA or right under. And I would take that for Schmidt, honestly, for a second year. Uh, when it comes to Strowman, I think Strowman's going to be a dog. Um, there's there's no doubt about it. A lot of people are hating on him already. Uh, I don't understand the hate on this guy, especially from the other side over there and in, in, in wherever the fuck they, those orange guys play. For some reason, the fan base hates this guy um, when he pitched very well for them. But he looks good, man, and he pitches to contact, and he's a ground ball percentage guy, okay? Like Christian likes uh, me and Christian okay, talk about. Okay, ground ball percentage. And then, listen, Luis Hill. Luis Hill, okay? Um, I need him to be anywhere close to what he when he first came up. If he can give – remember when he came up, he was like 21 innings of scoreless ball? This, yeah. this kid has the potential to go on a nice <clears throat> run for the New York Yankees, and he looks – like he's ready for. I remember I was posting picture, uh, videos about him warming up way before February in DR. This guy's mindset. You talk about Strowman being in a good mindset. Luis Hill is in like, this is my time now, and this is my time to shine, and I don't doubt that he will. Um, and, yeah, man, I think that this rotation might surprise. I'm going to lean towards that um, because I have to be op- optimistic. I, I Hopefully. Optimistic. And exactly. just a, a, a quick <laughs> thing on Nestor Cortez against lefties last year, 50 innings, nine home runs allowed. Against righties. So it's not even about the impact. It's, it's the fucking impact against righties. It's not that they're getting singles off the dude. They're creaming the baseball off the dude. And yeah. this is even going back to the previous year. I, I don't know. I even, I, I guess the thing for me is, too, is that he just didn't even impress me in spring. I see him pitching. I'm like, I, I feel there's nothing there. His I, just, I feel eight. there's nothing there. Uh, that's my thing. But Mario, we'll go to you next. Yeah, first off, I want to start with Luis Hill. Definitely has the best stuff. Delo Mio, you know, Kevin and I, big supporters of him. Listen, when it comes to him, give us 13 to 15 good starts, bro. Mm. Give us 13 to 15 of your best. Don't know what the Yankees plan is. I know they say we don't have an innings limit for him. We're just going to see how he looks or whatever, see how he feels. I think they have a, you know, an, an innings limit in mind at this point because the yeah. kid is still young, but he has electric stuff, man. Throws 100. That's why a lot of us felt like, he could be, you know, big for us in the bullpen, maybe down the stretch. But we'll see what the Yankees do with him because we know Clayton Beater is back there at this point in the season. Marcus Stroman, man, going to be a dog for the Yankees. Once he strikes out Kyle Tucker or Alex Bregman, you people that don't like him will fall in love with him this you weekend. People. I guarantee it. I'm just saying. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of fans, you know, the orange and, orange and blue, like Kevin was saying, a lot of them are okay. saying, you're not going to like him. After a couple of months, we'll see. But the guy seems very happy to be a Yankee. And that's what I want. I want guys that want to be here. I know the Monty reports. Listen, I was a big Monty guy, but if you don't want to be here, bet up la mierda. That's how I feel. Oy, I, want the, I want guys right. that want to be here. Nah, real talk. Hey, me, and, madre. And going to my <laughs> I agree, guy, I agree. going to my guy, Clark Schmidt, before Clark-y. I get to the, the two at the top. Clark, man, you're going to be phenomenal for the Yankees. I'm not saying all-star, like some hot takes out there. But I think he's going to hit his ceiling. I think he's going to have that 3-6, 3-7 ERA, man. Has to get those lefty out. The Let's lefty go. OPS against them last year was not great. Uh, the first two months especially, couldn't get out of the first three innings. By the way, second year as a starter. So there's definitely room for improvement. But I think he's going to be 3-6, 3-7 ERA. Really? Uh Oh, I'm Need sorry. It. I don't know if you're done yet. I just wanted no, no, to actually yeah. give the splits. Uh, yeah. I'm pulling them up. If you're not done, keep going. I'll, I'll say it after. No, no, I, no, I'm not done yet. Let me get to the two guys at the top. Let me get the two guys at the top. Johnny hit it on the head. When it comes to Nestor, man, you throw Nestor. If you throw that cutter, first pitch to all two be tomorrow, anywhere on that inside part of the zone, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> over the plate, he's sending he's that shit to the Crawford boxes, bro. I'm being for real. Like, I have, he's probably the guy that I have the, the least amount of faith in the rotation at this point. I think but Johnny that, said it's a lock, by the way. Bregman homering. <laughs> oh, man. Bregman, by the way, future Yankee, Bregman. Alex Bregman. Bregman. But we'll talk it's about happening. that next offseason. We'll talk about Alex Bregman next offseason. <laughs> and now we go to the guy. Give me one second. 
Oh shit. He's gonna he's gonna do it. I knew this motherfucker's gonna do it. Come on, baby! Come on, baby! Come on, baby! Let's go! Carlos, man, listen. I forgot about Carlos. Okay. Carlos, Carlos, yeah, Kevin, you didn't really mention him. Listen, he Carlos, him, right? it was great meeting you last year. You're a great guy. I'm rooting hard for you, man. All the stuff that I talked about you before with Kevin, Kevin was a little bit loud about you. All I'm asking is a man, little bit loud. That okay. third, that third pitch, I was looking at your pitch mix from 2021, one of your best seasons. You threw your change up 12% of the time, man. If you don't, if that back, you are worried about that back. But I know you could still throw 96, 97, man. You have to throw that third pitch 10 to 12% of the time because that, you know, the hitters will keep it in the back of their mind. It so just true. can't be fastball slider. Because if it is, bro, two pitch pitcher, I'm not saying you're equal to him, but ask Luis Severino how that worked out for him as a Yankee with the injuries and stuff. Carlos, man, we don't have a choice but to root for you, bro. I'm rooting for you hard, man. I'm praying you pitch well on Friday because there's a lot of other fan bases that so are saying you're Carl bro. Pavano, man. There's oh, a lot right. They're idiots. Anybody they're, who says that, I'm sorry. You, you didn't you didn't see Carl Pavano was a Yankee. This guy's not Carl Pavano. Well, neither do there, we. There's a lot. There's a lot riding. <laughs> That's great. That's good. That's there's a, a lot fact. riding on you, Carlos, especially because I don't have much faith in Nestor tomorrow. So Friday. I don't want to go into an 0-2. You better hide if he pitches well. I'm just saying that. He better pitch well, Carlos, man. I know you care. Well, I know a lot of the guys care, but I know you really care and you really want Facts. to be good. Facts. Show us, man. Let's go. He pitches can we get, well can we, can we get a little, too. Correct. He has pitched well in Houston. Can we get a little close-up of that hat? Can you put that a little closer to the camera? Look at that thing. Come on, fam. There's no... Come on now. Look at that. That's beautiful, man. Too that crispy. is beautiful. Christian... Let's hear your thoughts on the starting row row. You might think I'm crazy, but oh, shit. I have the most faith out of any of these five guys is Clark Schmidt. I Wow. Yeah. And, okay. And I know everybody's bringing up, oh, he couldn't get out of the third inning in April or May. And then look at what he did after that. He was one of yeah. the best pitchers in I did you want it? Maybe it's a little hyperbolic. He was one of the best pitchers in baseball. He was one of the most consistently good pitchers in mm -hmm. baseball for a real long time. Until I think he was starting to chalk up those innings and then the Yankees knew they were out of it. And I remember one game against Detroit specifically that the Yankees let him go a little bit longer than they would have because it was all about building him up. So the numbers kind of got skewed a little bit. I like Schmidt a lot. Like, like I said, I don't know if you want to go all-star. Can I get like a 386, you know, somewhere around there? Guy that yeah, gives me great. Guy that gives me like six innings every time out. Look, I like Schmidt's stuff. I think he's I think he's got the stones to do it here. So I got a lot of faith in Clark Schmidt. Um also uh, I love Luis Heel, man. Uh that stuff, like you want to take Garrett Cole out of the equation because he's hurt. Best, best pure stuff on the staff, without a doubt, mm -hmm. is, is Luis Heel. Yeah. How much does he have in the tank? I heard 80 to 100 innings. So what is that? Can he so what do you want to say? You know, he makes eight, ten starts while Cole's out. Fine, ball out, bro. And then you can go down to Scranton for a little bit, and we'll call you up again when we need you. That's all the Yankees need out of this dude is, is you know, maybe ten starts. You know, ball out for that, and then we'll build off of that for for, for next year. But I love Luis Hill stuff. I love – we always say smarter Yankees on the NYYSD podcast, smarter Yankees. This is a smart fucking move. This guy earned the right – to be the fifth starter, yeah. the Yankees didn't pull any of their bullshit and yeah. sent them down. They let him. They they gave the rightful guy the job. Okay. Hell yeah. Marcus Stroman. Oh, who didn't? Who, dude, I hated the move just purely on the fact that I didn't like Marcus Stroman. But I always respected the fact that this guy, one healthy, pitched well. Okay. Look at the numbers. When he's on the when he's on the mound, he's a good pitcher is not afraid of the spotlight, right? We all know this, you know, the guy loves the, the bright lights. I don't think that the Bronx is going to scare him. My my two concerns with him was his volatile personality and the fact that he's been he was hurt the last couple of years. Mm. So if he stays healthy, there's no issues because now like we said earlier in the show, you know, you saw a little bit of maturity out of Gleyber Torres. I feel like maybe we've seen a little bit of maturity out of Marcus Stroman too. And I'll tell you this, bro. If you grew up a die, if you were a, we're all grew up diehard Yankee fans, right? And we had the ability to play for the Yankees 
and the bald headed weasel said we weren't good enough to play for them. <laughs> yeah, and then we got traded to the fucking Mets. You'd be a little salty too, wouldn't you? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> fucking Mets. Who wants and to play that, the fucking Mets? And that's why they're salty right now because they yep. know that he ended up over there, but he didn't really want to be there. And hey, can't blame him. Sorry. Who wants to be there? Let's be honest. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to shit on Mets fans, right? But Appar- who the fuck wants to be there? Appar- apparently, Soto, right? Well, let's find yeah. out. <laughs> right, so no issues with Strowman. I think as long as he's healthy. This guy's going to be a bulldog, and we won't have to worry about him. What we're going to have to worry about is Nestor Cortez, and I was half-joking in our meeting last night, but would it surprise me if when Garrett Cole comes back, he's the guy that gets the fucking boot? No, it wouldn't surprise me. Wouldn't surprise me. Would not surprise me at all. I think the bloom is off off Nestor Cortez, and I remember, I don't think, maybe it wasn't last year, it was two years ago when we did this show, right before the season starts and somebody clipped it and tried to tried to uh, get me canceled or whatever, because I called <laughs> Nestor Cortez, the fucking team mascot. He was, he, he's better off served this year for this team's overall success, going back to being the mascot instead of pitching for this Max. team every five days. Okay. So don't embarrass us tomorrow. Uh, you know, get me Oof. through four innings with the game still reasonably close. It's all mascot. Yeah, exactly. Low bar, right? <clears throat> Now we move up to who's supposed to be the big dog here. <clears throat> Carlos, I'm telling you right now, bro, don't fuck with me, okay? <laughs> my, my favorite player, okay? There he is. He's right behind Francis' shoulder. My guy, Garrett fucking Cole, baby, is out for two months, bro. I felt like somebody stabbed me with a fucking knife in the stomach when I found yep. out that news, right? He did. That's, he did. That's my dude, bro. That's my guy. I'm asking you to do one fucking thing. Don't fuck with me. And what I, what I mean by that is you have two, two and a half months to be the ace of the staff. Do it. If you're gonna if you're gonna flip off the fans, blow kisses, tell Matt Blake to go fuck himself, you do that after <laughs> Garrett comes back. Dirty alpha dog until Garrett Cole comes back. Act like it. Okay? Because you don't wanna fuck with me. Okay, I have, I have okay. a platform, buddy. <laughs> he said, "I have a platform." Buddy. Yeah, damn right. No, bro, yeah, damn I, right. Just, I'm asking. That's all I'm asking out of him, bro. Please carry the staff while Garrett Cole is out. You were brought here to be the co-ace, the alpha dog. We said that you were going to be somebody that was going to rip Aaron Boone's heart out on the mound when he tried to take you out of the game too early. I need that fucking guy, man. I need him on the mound while Garrett Cole is out. I need, Look, I need you there all year, bro. You're brought here to help be a finishing piece to winning a World Series. But, dude, please don't fuck with me, bro. Be that guy while Garrett Cole is out. That's what I'm asking of you, bro. You know, don't make me call your wife, bro. Seriously. <laughs> oh no. By the way, I, mean, I, I love I love Ashley. I'm just saying, Ashley is a ride or die. I respect she's, it tremendously. She's no I respect Amy. it tremendously that she she's, is such a ride or die for a man. She's I no Amy that. Cole, bro. She's no Amy Cole. All right, little Amy. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I, don't know. No. I don't know if I see Amy at the stadium much. Okay, just saying. Amy's just happy that you know he's the age. You want, don't really, you want to do a little? I don't little see goes, Amy defending him much. Okay. You want, you want some light massage? She doesn't have to defend them much to her credit. I mean, yeah, I mean that's, yeah, that is. We can go with a little light massage. Misogyny and saying that game Amy's not at the games because she's home where she belongs. But you know, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> a, little, a little sad ending. Okay, there's no happy endings. It is a little sad ending. And that's the one clip. they're gonna clip, Christian. hundred <laughs> percent. That, that will be clipped. hundred percent. But getting, uh, let's let's do this now because we, you know, I know we have a little bit of a time constraint here, so I want to move on pretty quickly to. Uh, the bullpen side of things, if, if I just ask if we make that a little shorter than the prediction side, because prediction side is pretty big, that the fans are going, I know everybody's going to want to hear that. But let's get into this. Before we went live, everybody, I put everybody's name that retweeted on a wheel. I did the wheel. I got two winners. Hopefully, you guys are here. I'm going to ask that Jira go ahead and put it out there after I announce it. We had two winners to NYYU Day, April 20th. Trust me, the Audi Club is unbelievable, and you guys will have your tickets. The first one, I think she's actually in the chat, is Sierra, C-I-A-R-R-A, at Sierra, I think is not missed, I want to say is the name. She literally is in the chat. She just said, I'll cry if I don't win. Well, guess what? You're not crying. You did Congratulations. Win. Congratulations. Let's go. Congrats. Congrats. So you, you are not crying. You won. And then we got <laughs> Rob. 
Mario. There it is. And then Rob Felice. <laughs> I don't know if Rob is in the chat, but Rob Felice, his at is at Rob Felice, F-E-L-I-Z. Uh, he also won. So if nobody responds quickly, uh, obviously, Sierra, we already know you responded. Yeah. But Rob, I hope Rob can respond pretty quickly when we put it out there because we want to get you guys those tickets. We'll, we'll contact you directly and figure all that out. So congratulations. And YYU Day is an amazing event. Um, be ready to have a great time. Um, going into the Yankees bullpen. I'll be honest. I like the Yankees bullpen a lot. I think Nick Birdie is better than what I had. Some people go, who's Nick Birdie? Oh my God. You guys are talking about a guy with a six ERA. Oh, Nick Birdie. Oh God. I love when people look behind just a little baseball card real quick. They never see, they never seen a guy ever pitch, probably never watched them at all. No. Nick Birdie could could really be a special guy. He could be an Ian Hamilton type for the Yankees that just comes out of nowhere and really dominates. Ian Hamilton, fucking awesome. Yeah. Ian Hamilton's awesome. I got a bold take that I want to talk about later when it comes to the closers. Ian Hamilton could be in that in that in that realm. I like those biceps. One, one of my biggest concerns <laughs> on the New York Yankees is the closer. I do not have faith in Clay Holmes. I am not sitting here saying that Clay Holmes is a bad relief pitcher. Not saying that. I am concerned about Clay Holmes handling big games for the New York Yankees. That is my concern. I'm not concerned about him totally in April, May. I'm concerned when those games get a little tighter, when they get a little closer, and, and you're you're going against you know some, some pretty important games. I'm concerned about him then. I don't have faith in Clay Holmes. I Gringo, also don't have faith Gringo in Chapman, Aaron okay. Boone. I don't have faith in Aaron Boone coming out there going, he obviously doesn't have it today. Let's go ahead and switch this somebody over. Let's 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 get somebody else in there. The way that Bruce Bochy did aye, aye. in the World Series and the playoffs overall, he did an amazing job of seeing, hey, LeClerc don't got it today. Hey, Araldas don't have it today. Make a change. Get somebody else in there. He went by his gut. And I think with a guy like Clay Holmes, you gotta go by your gut. I don't have faith in him, but I will say this. I think the Yankees bullpen is very, very good. I think this, this is a bullpen that's going to last throughout the year because they got other guys that are closing in. Danny Watson, uh, Neely's another guy. Uh, those guys are on the mend. They're right there. Very, very good stuff. I think there's a lot of good in the Yankee bullpen. Let's go around the horn like normal. Kev, go ahead. Yeah, when it comes to the Yankee bullpen, uh, Brian Hope uh, backs the uh, tweeted earlier saying that this is probably what it's going to look like, that it's going to be the the five starters that we already talked about, then Beater, Birdie, Ferguson, Gonzalez, Hamilton, Holmes, Loisiga, and Weaver. Mm. Um, I feel like, like Beater and Weaver both serve the same purpose in this lineup. I don't know how you guys feel. That's the only thing that worries me. And, and another thing I was looking at, guys, nobody on there has much options. I think Hamilton has one. And I believe uh, Beater has three. So I don't like that because that tells me that if the Yankees want to move some guys around, it's probably going to be Beater up and down, up and down. So, I mean, yeah. besides that, I do feel very, very good about the bullpen. I mean, we were talking about um, um, Beater earlier, his pitch mix. I know he has uh, two or three pitches as well, so that works better in the bullpen. Fastball I slider do. change, and the change isn't great. So fastball slider. That's yeah. why. So it's kind of a two-pitch guy and, <laughs> and throw a change up here once in the blue to throw you off. But, yeah, man, when I look at this bullpen, I, I understand the, the hesitancy when it comes to Clay Holmes. But like I said, go look at the splits. I, I felt the same way until I'm like, this guy just gets the yips and shits all over the bed. I don't – now, if you want me to be honest, I don't trust him in October. He has yet to show me that. I mean, he has, he has, he has had good outings in October, but – when he is bad, he just shits the bed. And then if the Yankees don't have a plan B, he's, he's a closer that you need to have a plan B for. That's how I look at it. You're going to get F. Ross sometime in this, in this year. I think that guy can go into that in that role. I do think Ian Hamilton is the fire uh, the fireman of the group. Um, This guy is just so poised mm. and so good. When he goes up, there, he does not give a flying fuck. Talk you about a guy who's a dog. Too, yeah. You got guy ice in his nails. veins. Yeah, th that yep. dude has he puts he leaves his nuts on the mound every time he's there. He, he marks his territory for hey. sure. Balls. Oh. Go to manscaped.com. Use uh use promo code NYYU. Thank you. Speaking of balls. <laughs> um Ferguson Gonzalez. Gonzalez, maybe, maybe the Diablos pitching against me, uh, uh, in front of his family helps him be uh, look better and have a better mindset. But he he had a rough spring. Um, I do hear he's inconsistent from Dodger fans. I know, Johnny, you have a few uh -huh. Dodger fans. Maybe they can tell you some more news about Gonzalez. 
Uh, Dirty Birdie, man. Um, this is a kid who can really, really, if he stays healthy, be a really big piece in this bullpen. Um, this guy has nasty, disgusting stuff. 100 miles per hour. You can't ask for more than that. And Ferguson, I know he had a rough spring. He didn't pitch many innings, but he does have good stuff. So I'm very confident about this bullpen, Pete. I'm just worried when it comes to their flexibility. They don't got a lot of guys with options. I was, mm-hmm. I'm wondering if maybe they do move that low Isaac who was on his last year of his deal, or they do move Canely. I don't know, but let's see. It's going to be interesting. All right, Christian. Look, I don't care about all the other names because as we said earlier, Brian Cashman is, is good at finding those guys mm. out of nowhere. Matt, let Matt Blake go to work. Boom. Right. I care about one guy and that's Clay Holmes because he's the last line of defense. And if yep. you need a closer that needs a backup plan, then he's not my closer. Okay. I agree. Aaron 100%. Boone, Aaron Boone cannot manage the game saying to himself, well, I can't pitch Hamilton in the eighth because I might need him to bail out Clay Holmes. Then guess what? Great Ian, point. Ian Hamilton's your fucking closer then. Okay. Great point. Got a valid, got a valid point in my opinion. So that's where I'm at with this bullpen. I think, you know, you want to say fifth to eighth inning, whatever, six to eighth, wherever they have to go get the starter to the, through the eighth. I think they'll be fine. The Yankees are going to hold a lot of friggin' leads. It's Clay Holmes. You want to say he gets the yips, the, the, the splits, whatever. I don't care. Look, I'll tell the you this shits. right. Uh, he, he, he's taking plenty of shits on the mound, bro. This guy's a, <laughs> you know, this guy's a human. F- he needs the word depends up there. What's, what, do they, what do they give you when you got to take a shit? You know, what's the that? Laxative. Laxative. Uh, laxative the guy's a, action, guy, okay. The guy's a human fucking laxative, bro. He's fixed more, <laughs> constip- he's fixed more constipation amongst Yankee fans than any doctor could per- could prescribe them. I took <laughs> I took two by accident one day thinking it was gas sex. It wasn't. I had the Holy worst cramps shit. of my life. But anyway, yeah. go ahead. Okay. <laughs> they don't they don't manufacture <laughs> enough. Okay. They don't manufacture enough Xanax in this country for okay. me to take to not have a fucking panic attack watching this guy try to close a game, okay? Right. Now you could say oh. that's my anxiety, okay, okay, whatever, but he also <laughs> is anxiety-inducing, all right? This is what this guy does. So if you're telling me that I need to have a backup for him, then he needs to not be the closer anymore. I agree. If you're telling me Clay Holmes is a setup guy, I feel a lot different about this bullpen than I do if Clay Holmes is the last line of defense. Now who's going to step up? Could it be Ian Hamilton? I think the Yankees were leaning that way at one point mm-hmm. uh, last year. And then I don't know if Hamilton got hurt or they got cold feet because God forbid they ever do anything ballsy, you know, like take a guy out of a role. Uh, I, Johnny's going to Johnny's going to like me and then hate me. I, no. <laughs> I, I would I would love the to be the guy because he's got the nastiest stuff probably in the bullpen. Problem is he, he, he can't stay healthy. So he's, he can't. he's made a glass. So I mean that's that's where that's what's I, just so much untapped potential with with Jonathan Loisica. But you know the Giants gave up on him because he was hurt, and that's yeah. just kind of carried itself out. So I mean I do whatever you, whatever names you want to throw out there, I'm fine with them. It's the last name that I we're gonna throw out there that I'm worried about. Yep, guys, we're 21 likes away from 300. A couple of quick super chats. Crackle Nuts says, here's a good topic. Who will make the all-star team? We might get to that in predictions. Connor O'Neill, do we believe, Blake, um, that Hill isn't on an innings limit, or will the nerds take over if Blake is telling truth? Uh, Hill has 200 Ks and stays in rotation when Cole gets back. Rodon, 180 K, Stroman, 170 innings. That would be amazing. FL Diver says, Rodon is going to be a pitcher this year. He is going to paint is what he says. We'll see about that. I think there was one more I want to grab real quick. Connor O'Neill again says, just win every game by three or more and no homes. That would be nice. Mario, go ahead. Pete, before, can I just make one quick Please, thing about Heal? Yeah. The Yankees are now saying that there's no innings limit on him? That's what they're saying. They're yeah. going to base it off of feel, and they feel they got analytic numbers, basically, to tell them if his stuff is decreasing so, to, so, to limit him a bit. So they're contradicting what the manager said last week. Already on, a, on another podcast, yes. on another podcast, because Boone told them that he doesn't that this guy doesn't have a lot of innings between 80 and 100. Those were Aaron Correct. Boone's words. Aaron yeah. Boone's okay. Words. And and you and not to go off on heel here, but he hasn't pitched in two years. This guy's taking the ball for 140, 130. No, no, no way. Exactly. They'll never, so, they'll never let him. So do he that, has ever. an innings limit. Don't fucking yes. bullshit us. Yeah, 100 percent. No doubt about it. But again, that's the, the horrible <laughs> communication of the New York Yankees. They preach. 
They don't even get me on that one. They preach communication more than anybody, and they're the worst at it that I've seen in baseball. Maybe there's other teams. Oh, but God, they're I awful. obviously focus on the Yankees. They're fucking horrible for a team that preaches it every day. Mario, go ahead. I'll try to be a little bit quicker because I don't know if we're on a time thing or anything. But when it comes to the bullpen, Dave said it, man. I think we were a little bit spoiled with Mariano. Completely understand, though, if you want to say Clay Holmes makes your stomach hurt, that's completely fine. I still think the guy is pretty good. Maybe not top three in baseball, but I think he's definitely up there. Um, but kind of how I believe it was Kevin that said it about what Ian, what Ian Hamilton's role is, kind of to put the fire out. Mm. And so maybe he'll be the closer. Come October, we'll see how the Yankees play it. I still think they do a closer by committee when it comes to the beginning of the season because they don't like to go to guys back-to-back to close games. Uh, I've already I, I spoke about that a little bit. Oh, so I kind of want budget, please bullpen budget exactly. Oh, God, every freaking every game. Loazaga, L- Loazaga will get into it. Uh, Lasagna will. The, they will have the bullpen <laughs> budget up on yes on Sunday. Guarantee. L- I can't stand it. I Lasagna. hate it. Nobody knows how bad I get. My fucking balls get twisted when I see it. I'm not getting. It, it makes me sick. <laughs> L- Lasagna. I'm sure he'll get into Loazaga, but man, he could be the closer if the guy could just stay on the field. He's got nasty stuff. I know he's been hit around a little bit in spring training, so that is a cause of con- for concern. But I feel like if you know, sometimes we judge the guy's spring training a little more than others. So I'm just hoping he's a, he's a little bit better, you know, in season. But I want to talk about the lefties a little bit, trying to trying to replace Wandy Peralta. Mm. I need I need Ferguson or Gonzalez to step up. Kevin hit on it a little bit, but I need one of those two to kind of step up and get those big outs. We're talking about lefties. Higgies are facing two of the best left-handed bats in baseball this weekend. Kyle Tucker, Jordan Alvarez. Mm. Those guys are going to have to get point. big out. And I know they want to. people want to say, oh, it's only March. Bro, these games matter, bro. Yep. All these games matter, especially the way the AL is. Not even the AL East. I'm talking about the AL because people are like, all right, the, the division's already a wash because we don't have Garrett Cole. There's a lot of good teams in the AL, folks. I don't know if we the Orioles like don't have watch. British. The Orioles don't have Bradish, but still, I mean, there's a lot of good teams in the AL. The Yankees have to take these games very seriously, and they're going to have to get some big outs from their lefties. So hopefully Gonzalez or, or Ferguson can get those big outs and kind of take Wandy's role there. But that's what I'm looking for. Can I just, to, to Mario's point when it comes to, to, to Alvarez, lefty, I'm just going to say this. His splits are better against lefties. Yep. Yeah. When we wake the fuck so up. Fuck. He's just, yeah. he's, Robbie you know Ray knows that. Can we Robbie Ray, I was going to say him? Robbie Ray with Scott Can we wake the fuck you, you know up and, and, and look though? at, go ahead, I'm just going to say this, and, and look at what Bruce Bochy did, talking about a manager with nuts. Come on, yeah. man. Look, oh, no, 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 don't, don't be sorry. You're, you're 100% right. I was just going to say, he's just one of those fucking guys. He's one of the best hitters in the game. You, yes. Fuck a split. Fuck us. You know what he's you like do David with him? He's like David Ortiz. Yeah, you got to roll the dice. Throw you different go, guys at him. You see go with your hot hand. You go with who is hot in the moment. And you feel has the best stuff to get him out. That's what you That's do. It. You don't sit there and go, yeah. let, let me go to Gonzalez. I'm going to go to Gonzalez when Ian Hamilton's prepared and ready. No, bad fucking idea. You'll end up seeing what happens. Johnny, go ahead. Uh, yeah, a lot of, I agree with a lot of stuff that has already been said. <clears throat> with my thing for the closer, you don't want a guy who can't throw strikes as your closer. Base mm. runners are very, very important in a close game late. You can't walk the leadoff guy. You can't hit a guy with a pitch. These are things, base runners are so crucial late in the game. So I don't like Loisaga as the closer. And Clay Holmes makes me pull whatever hair I have on my head out when he falls, when he walks the leadoff guy, when he hits a dude. Because when shit goes sour with him, shit goes really sour really quick. And like we mentioned earlier in the show, our manager has no feel for the game and has no instinct and has no has has no ability to see when a pitcher needs to be pulled. So there isn't a lifeline that's going to be thrown to Clay Holmes when he starts shitting himself. He's going to be left out there because Aaron Boone is afraid to hurt his feelings. Mm. Guy's going to probably lose a game like we've seen happen many times before, and that's when problems happen. So it's kind of a – you look at Clay Holmes' numbers, they look great on paper. He throws a 99-mile-an-hour bowling ball. Nobody wants to face that in the ninth inning. You just got to throw strikes. You got to attack yeah. hitters, especially when you throw 99. That's why I like a guy like Ian Hamilton. Mm. He's built like an action figure. He's got a neck as big as a freaking tree stump. The guy looks like a UFC fighter. He's coming in there pissed off. His hat's all the way down to his fucking nose. You can't even see his eyes. He's yep. throwing 97, 98, 
filthy change up fucking thing, whatever the hell he calls that. It's disgusting. Bondio. He's got a good slider. You talk about a bulldog and a guy you trust in a tight spot. Like you guys said, he'd be the he'd be the firefighter, uh, the fireman, come in there and put the fires out. Um, that's a dude I would love to see as a closer, but it's probably not going to happen because Boone, um, B Boone is a communicator and he's always trying not to hurt people's feelings. So of course they're going to keep Clay in there, um, which is fine. Numbers say he is a good closer, so get out there. Give if if Clay can get me 35, 40 saves this year, I'll be I'll fall out of my fucking chair. I'll be absolutely thrilled. Um, uh, in Dane, terms of the, the lefties. Way. Can I just say this real quick? What Dane said earlier, yeah. and I, I, Johnny, you're you're talking closer right now, so I'll, I'll throw it to you. Yeah. And maybe he doesn't fit well. He said he thinks Nick Birdie gets a lot of save opportunities this year. He thinks he's going to be that oh. good for the Yankees. I mean, the stuff is he's arguably got the best stuff in the whole bullpen. So yeah. if he can, I think the problem with him is just health. Yeah. Um, if he can stay healthy, yeah. um, he showed he showed this spring he get those strikes. Nobody wants to see that arm angle throw a ninety nine at late in the game when you're down a few runs. So that's a tough assignment. Um, I like Caleb Ferguson a lot. I I mean, obviously, I live in L.A. I go to a lot of Dodger games because uh, it's an hour away from me. Um, I watch the games on TV because it's 7 p.m. and there's nothing else on. And I'm not definitely not watching the damn Angels. But uh, he, he's been up to 97 miles an hour. He's got a big, loopy curveball. He throws a hard slider. He can throw a change. Um, the stuff is there. Sometimes he misses middle often, as you could as we saw in the Yankees and Dodgers series when Volpe took him deep. Um, but he lives in the top of the strike zone, something Matt Blake preaches with these guys. If you have high velocity, two strikes, pound the upper part of the strike zone, break that slider off down and away the lefties. Um, so that's something I like from him a lot um, going forward. And then um, I'm not I'm not huge on Gonzalez. At first I was. I wasn't yeah. huge on him to begin with. I, I like the move. Um, I think his stuff is decent. He's got kind of that low arm angle, which makes it tough on lefties, but uh, I don't know. The stuff just isn't overpowering. He's probably a bottom of the bullpen guy. Maybe maybe you're down four and you need to, uh, to just make a pitching change and get lefty in there. He, that's probably where he needs to be. Um, but overall, I think the top end of our bullpen is really strong. Uh, Loisaga, I feel like this is the third year in a row that he's come to spring late, and he's kind of been uh, he's kind of been delayed on his throwing program. He comes the middle late spring. He's always playing catch up, and that's probably. I mean, I'm not a freaking doctor. I can't tell you these things, but starting late and having to play catch up and having to rush your throwing program could be why he runs into some of those arm problems, especially the right. forearm and the elbow. Um, who knows? Some guys just aren't made to be durable. Some guys got a rubber arm. Some guys don't. That's just how body mechanics and and that whole kind of thing goes. But um, when he's on, his stuff is. I mean, who? Who wants to see a 98, 99 mile an hour bowling ball with that change of slider combo? Um, another Alex Bregman reference. He said some of the best stuff he's seen in, in the whole major leagues is, is Jonathan Loisaga's stuff. So it's not a comfortable at bat. The ball is running all over the place. Um, definitely a tough assignment. He's just got to keep the ball down. When we see him get into trouble, when he leaves it up. Sinker that, that stays up gets smacked. I don't care if you throw 100. So he needs to keep the ball down. Um kind of be how he was a couple of years ago when he was, I think he was an all-star, right? Um, yeah. A couple of years back. One of the best, one of the best setup in, in, in all the, in all of baseball. So I'm um, really looking forward to him kind of getting back into that mode after kind of having a rough spring, didn't look great in Mexico, but like I said, he he's playing catch up. He might have a couple of rough outings early in the season and, and everyone's going to jump off the bandwagon, but I'm, I'm going to say probably around early to mid May, you're going to start seeing him be pretty locked in. So Overall, I think it's a really good bullpen. They're going to have to eat a lot of innings, um, I think, with how long they're going to let some of these guys go in the rotation. Um, but I'm, I'm, I think the bullpen is one of the better parts of this team, and I'm looking forward to seeing some of those flamethrowers late. No doubt. And I think a couple of years ago, we thought that Loisiga was going to be the closer. And I was yeah. kind of like in everybody's mind already, he would be the closer. <laughs> Francis he just that, doesn't strike out a ton of dudes for some reason. It, it just with his sense. stuff, it's kind of shocking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, I, I don't, I don't want to rehash a lot of the stuff that's al already been said. I think we pretty much, uh, tapped everything on the bullpen. The only thing I can think to add at this point would just be, I guess Clay Holmes is not, is not a closer, but I don't necessarily know that there is a closer on this team. I think the best way to go about it is just do it by committee. Don't, don't necessarily give anybody a title. I don't know why we have to fall in love with titles. The game has changed. It's 2024. Right. It's not the 90s and the early 2000s anymore. And if I go up and down the 30 different teams around there, 
there's not Which 30 closers. There's just not 30 closers in the game right now. That doesn't mean that there's not, yeah. you know, 10 contenders for World Series. There's just not 30 closers anymore. It's just not where the game is. You can do it by committee. We've seen it done just as recently as last year. Yep. Again, it's true. to do that, though, we need a manager who is a, a little bit more, you know, capable and a little bit less of a just communicator. And let me make sure that Holmes he feels good. You know what I mean? Oh, God. Uh, so, yeah, I think I think if we do that, we'll be in good shape. Like Kev said, when the dog days of summer hit, if Holmes is not looking as sharp and you start moving more towards the hot hand and Ian Hamilton or Nick Birdie, whoever it is at the time, I think we'll do fine. One thing about Brian Cashman that you can't knock, the guy knows how to build a bullpen, and I yep. think he's done it once again. No doubt about it. Great points on the Yankees bullpen across the board. And now we get into, this is it. This is this is what everybody's been waiting for. So if some of you left, I'm sorry you left now, but it is prediction time. This is it. I want to start off with two things. And we're going to get in the conversation. We could talk. This is this is the, the I know it's been an open panel the whole time, but this is when we have a conversation as a team. I got to start off with record. I know it's tough. Garrett Cole's out. A lot of that stuff has changed. I'll throw it at you guys immediately. I, I have no problem putting my record in for the Yankees this year. Chat, go ahead and throw your, your New York Yankees record in. I want to hear it. We want to hear it. And get those likes up with five likes from 300. Hit that still like button. It. We still got 350 plus. We still got 350 plus in here. I'm starting off right now. The New York Yankees finished 93 and 69. Ugh. I still think that is extremely impressive, to be honest, with Cole being out. I got them at 93 and 69. I got them making the playoffs. I'm not going to get into where they end up. We'll talk about that. Let's start with the um, win and loss record. Francis, I'm going to throw it to you next. Uh, 93 and 69 seems very, very accurate. I could say. 92 or 94 just to vary just to be different but i'll i'll double what you're saying 93 and 69 seems very doable i think um you know we spoke about the al i think mario was bringing it up about the american league and how tough it's going to be the american least the, the american league east is not the cakewalk that the dodgers broadcast booth thought that they could say it no. was uh a couple of days back uh, you have the Orioles who are up and coming with a lot of young studs. I mean, they have that girl. She hits amazing. So we'll see her soon. And then, you know, Toronto, again, they have a, they have an offense that just doesn't quit. So, you know. They're, I'm sorry. They're... I just got that. I literally, I just, that one hit me. I got it like, too. I caught it too. I was I'm like, sorry. the girl. Johnny, just a girl. you should have got it before all of us. <laughs> Dude, so, so, okay, my, hey, the, Mar Kev, the Maryland Kev, sports blog Kev, loves me, man. Kev, my, my, my button is bigger than yours and it works, okay? Just, you know. my, I don't know your finger. Is it, you, you hit it with your button, middle finger? Like, my <laughs> button is bigger than yours. It's crazy. Hey, yo. <laughs> hey, yo. Yo, no diddy, no diddy, no diddy. No diddy. No, no, no. no but, out. yeah, just to, the AL East is, is not going to be a cakewalk. That's all I'm saying. Yep. Tampa Bay always finds a way. Me and Pete say it all the time. They just always yep. find a way. Don't pay attention to the names. Pay attention to the organization and the fact that they have one of the best damn managers in baseball. They always find a way. I mean, it's not going to be easy, but I think the Yankees are going to pull it out at the end of the day. Pull it out, hey. okay? Yo, hey, <laughs> game is right, they're not leaving it in. Okay, a little yeah, corner. Another one getting canceled tonight. Just the tip. Just the tip. Like kind of <laughs> oh, my baby Livia made an appearance. All right, let's turn it over to Christian. Give us your give us your win and loss record. So a few weeks ago on NYYST, we did Fred and uh, you know our projections for the year, and we had Yankees over under ninety three was the number. That was pre Cole. Does that Ooh. change now that he's injured? Hell yeah. It I does. Uh, it should, but I don't know, man. I, you want to say this is an 88 win team now? Wait, where did you have it? Where do you have it? I had them over 93 before Cole got hurt. Okay. I mean, so, hey, no, it's your your take. What do you think? That's what I'm saying. Does it change? Is this that is Cole? I mean, I think it has to. So, I can't I have to put them somewhere in the 89 win range right wow. now. Wow. Mm, that's right on the border. That's going to get them into the postseason. That'll Hopefully. get them in. 
South would... of the border, where the tuna fish play. Sorry, and remember, Texas got in by one game last year and won the whole damn thing. So that's really that's they just get okay. in. Okay, we got Hal Steinbrenner here, folks. Okay, it's a get... crapshoot. Okay, it's a crapshoot. <laughs> get in and let my ace drop his fucking nuts on the mound in game one. That's all I'm asking for. We're, We're dropping gonna... all kinds of shit on the mound today. Facts. We're gonna go to Kev. Uh so this is all and this is me thinking that Cole, like he says, feels great. He I know he wants June first, but I don't think the Yankees will do June first that soon. But Cole coming back being Cole, and you got surprise appearances by Giancarlo or maybe Rizzo's it's like there's a lot of things that can go right for this Yankees. And if I the way I feel about this team, as much as we're going up and down in the offseason with some guys getting hurt here and there. If Cole is back, again, this is the big if, because that is the major thing. If Cole comes back and it's Cole, not 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 Cole, I'm going with 95 wins. Okay. I'm going to go with 95 wins. Um, that puts him at 67 losses. I do think we 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 barely scrape the 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 AL East from the Orioles. I still think we're the we're the we're the better squad. Listen, last year there were times where we didn't have we didn't have Judge, and I was telling Mario this team. These teams are frauds. They're not here yet. They, I know they got a bunch of young talent, but they're not here yet. Um, and we split that series. Remember, Mary, we were talking about if Judge is with us, if Judge is with the Yankees last year, who who wins the AL East? Probably still, not them, Yankees. but they, they're a playoff. I still think Baltimore, I mean, Baltimore would win. Still, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. okay. But the Yankees so, are a playoff team. If that's where you're going with it. I so, Oriol, es un mamá huevo, coño. Estoy harto ese equipo, ya, coño. Estoy harto. I'm so sick and tired of us sucking off the Baltimore Orioles. Yeah, you guys. You guys you, know me. You guys me. have to stop. You guys shit on everybody else and shit on them. It's like you're scared of the Orioles. And, and I, I get it. I get that. No, I think it's real. I get they're innovative. I think it's honestly, I think it's a mark of reality. It's the hair. It's the hair, dude. I just think it's a mark of reality. The Baltimore Warriors have been a bad team for a while, and they got a really good fucking squad. I think as Yankee fans, we do got to recognize that. They're a really good team. And With things could go real. Do they have a bullpen? Even, I mean, they could. you could say Greg, they have any team. Greg Kimbrell is their closer. Their starting it's rotation, not, their, their starting rotation, just like ours, is heavy. On one hand, if Corbin Burns loses any time, or, or if, if Means is not... Look, that's what I'm saying. They they still have as many holes, a yo, as we do. Okay, hey, so, hey, yo. so when hey, we right. think about look, it, all right. What do we talk about? We say we got depth, right? They got depth in the minor league system, also. They shit play. out yeah. random created blonde players that are great all over the place. Like they're they're, they're but they I don't mean, hit. Them, they're like they the Dodgers. They they shit out random created they're, players with blonde hair that play really well. Regardless of how many guys, it's like you can cut their arms off and they'll grow four back. It's it's so Correct. irritating. Yeah, I love what you said. They're just like the Dodgers because they shit the bed in October. Hey! By the way, by the yeah, way, Jerry, Aaron Jerry Hicks, Young. Aaron Hicks scored six runs in the total eleven of the. Say it with your chest. Say it with your chest, Kevin. Just saying that. <laughs> so I don't believe in the Orioles. They haven't showed me anything yet. They got to come and beat the ass, beat that Yankees ass. For me to be like, oh shit, the Orioles. Nah, I'm not. Be I'm not careful. What, be careful what you it's wish just, for. So because no, we're that, talking oh, that's regular. What they have to do before I start giving them credit. Because yeah, because clip that and talk... send it to the hairdo, bro. You said clip that and talking... send it to the hairdo. If we're talking regular season, though, right? Because that's what the question is. If we're talking yeah. regular season, because if we go to the playoffs, I'm a thousand percent with Kev. They haven't shown me that they can do it in the play. As a matter of fact, I mean, I, the only I have rebuttal. This... Only rebuttal I have on that is what if the Yankees showed us in the playoffs? No, no, no. They get yeah. to the LCS, they score runs, Pete. We don't win at all, but we get we we score runs. They don't. So what, are we, what, are we, what, are, what are we? What have we become? That that's that's the that's the. No, way no, that's, that we a, see different the that's, that's, that's a different combo. That's a different combo. That's a different combo than than, than the <laughs> Orioles shit in the bed. That's a different yeah. conversation. I'm Yo, just don't trigger the top rated Maryland sports Twitter account of all. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jerry. They're, they're my Jer official sponsor. <laughs> Jared Cole so, in the boys. Hold on, yeah. we still need Mario and we need Johnny. Mario, go ahead. One before I get into my prediction, give me one second. Shout out to my guy Scott Wright. Scott, I am buying you a drink whenever I see you. This shit just got me fired up. I want to run through a wall. Baltimore is no longer a cute underdog story. Let's see how they handle expectations. Scott, Woo! I will run through a wall with you. I despise that team. I despise that team, okay? You're going to despise them more after this year, but right. go ahead. Uh, I'm, tired of, I'm tired of Glaber playing patty kick with Anthony Santander when he gets to second base. Glaber, I love you. Stop doing that. Patty okay. cake. 
Soto likes Santander we, too. Yo, stop, stop. I can't, I can't listen to Baltimore Love anymore. I'm sick and tired of it. 95 <laughs> and 67. We're winning the division, man. We are winning the hey, division. Hey, let's go. Okay. All Listen, right. the way I see it is a lot of you guys are disrespecting Alex Verdugo, man. A lot of you guys do Ooh. not see the value in this guy. And I don't know, I'm not saying on the panel. Oh, I a love lot, Alex. A lot of a lot of people in the chat don't realize. And I know it was, you know. Right before the Soto news, and people felt like we weren't gonna get Soto. Here's Forty doubles, case, maybe. Yo, he slaps doubles around Fenway. If if okay. he's if he's leading off, listen, I, I know they have Glaber leading off opening day, but if he's leading off, he can do some damage. And the way I see it is, Cole will come back mid June. I don't think June first, mm. but he'll come back mid June. Just hope he's not feeling anything. We're gonna we're gonna get somebody at the deadline. They're gonna. I, oh my God! I'm gonna sound like Brian Cashman. We're getting Dominguez <laughs> back in July. We're getting Efros back. Like I'm excited for this team, man. And chat, I I know you guys want to show them a ton of respect. Just know when Bronx and nothing is on, and we're talking about the Baltimore Orioles, there's a lot of hate in this heart. I'm tired. People talking about Gunnar Henderson and Ali Rushman like they're Jesus Christ. They also have the just, Virgin. Just by the like, way. They also have the Virgin Mary coming up at some point this season. I can't. Correct. I can't. I can't stand anybody Correct. on that. And, and, and Kerstead and Kowser and and Kowser. Oh my God! And the guy who's better than Jason Dominguez. And hit one sixty-seven. I mean, on, you can't listen I, I, to listen, Baltimore listen, fans. I'm just saying. Listen, man. No, no. I'm just. I'm just. Baltimore gonna say fans will piss you off. I, I see that They can do it. They can they do, do it. it. Yeah. When you when you, when but, you fuck up the national anthem, you have a problem with me. And I'm just gonna end it with this. <laughs> oh, they, they do <laughs> fuck yo, up the national yo, anthem. I, I hate when they go. Oh, oh yes, my god. Correct. I hate that. No, so, that's disgraceful. The, that's the Yankees that, went six and seven last year with them with Jake Bowers, Billy McKinney, fucking Willie Calhoun. I'm just gonna say that. Johnny, go ahead. Craig Kimbrough's a closer. Just saying. Yeah. Pete. Pete took my exact number. I was gonna say ninety three. On the wins, um, I think we have enough to tread water in the first half. I think we can still be right in the thick of the wild card um, by the time Garrett Cole comes back. And then when we get Garrett Cole and Dominguez back, it's got to be pedal to the metal. It's got to be winning time. It's, it can't be load management bullshit. It can't be punt lineups on a third day of uh, on a Sunday, end of the week series kind of bullshit. There's got to be a sense of urgency. There's got to be... Um, you got to have the killer instinct. If the game's close, put your best guys in there. I don't care if it's the second day of a back-to-back -back or some bullshit made-up rule that you yeah. put on your own team. There's got to be a killer instinct and the desire to win baseball games on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I Do I trust Aaron Boone to do that? Fuck no, I don't. But <laughs> I think the team is good enough to overcome the deficiencies we have with the manager. I think the offense is going to carry this rotation through the first half of the season. Um, and then I think the second half of the season gotta gotta step it up. Dominguez has to step in and, and be great from day one. Um, he's gonna add a great kind of switch hitter, kind of power hitter, gap to gap, kind of athletic, young, fresh, kind of refreshing kind of presence in the middle of this order. Um, hopefully stands hidden homers, but if he's not, kick his ass to the curb and put Dominguez in there because he's gonna help us down the stretch. Um, I think the AL East is an absolute, it's gonna be a bloodbath. It's going to be, I mean, the Red Sox aren't good, but they've got decent enough hitters. They've got decent enough arms in their rotation to compete. It's not going to be an easy out, especially when we have that blood rivalry. Um, th there's going to be no easy series in the AL East, and it's going to be scratching, clawing, and fighting your ass off to win 95-plus yep. games and win that division. So, I mean, last year Baltimore had one-on-one. -on -one. Mario and Kevin absolutely love them. Um, <laughs> Tampa Bay won 99 games. Tampa Bay won 99 games. Exactly. The Blue Jays yep. won 89. Tough, I mean, man. I mean, we we were only seven wow. games behind the Blue Jays, and we had probably the worst season you could possibly think of. Yeah. So I think we're within reach of the Blue Jays. Who knows what the hell the Rays are going to look like? They somehow you can put a little league team in Tampa, and they're going to win 95 games. So they're probably going to do that again. Uh, Baltimore wow, lost a few starting pitchers, but they're going to be probably around 95 wins too. Um, I think there's going to be three or four teams in this division all fighting within five or six games of first place. Um, and you you better beat the Mariners. You better beat the Rangers. You better beat the Astros. You got to beat those fringe wildcard teams because even one game, like Christian said, the Rangers, if one if one more game went wrong or one or two more games went wrong, they don't make the playoffs and they don't win the World Series. So yep. every every game against those fringe wildcard teams is going to be so crucial when it comes to late September, because everyone's probably going to be bunched in there within two or three games. So 
It's got to be a sense of urgency. I think we got a good shot to sneak in the wild card and do some damage, especially with Cole and Dominguez coming back. Um, it's going to be a very fun offensive team to watch. Hopefully the rotation can hold up long enough until Garrett Cole comes yep. back. But um, yeah, I think it's going to be a solid team, 93 wins, and let's see what we can do in October. By so the way, it. everything went right for the Orioles last year. Just want to say that, guys. Everything went right for them. Just saying. No, no, no. Another thing is, saying. all the guys I'm, that I'm are playing saying. are the prospects. And either we trade our prospects or we keep them. Hold on. Well, it's like, as me, well, it's like uh, we got to make up saying. a pocket as well. Let, fair, me get, let me get to Christian real quick. Because I think, Christian, you got to you gotta jump off. No, I'm all right. You sure? Yeah, what are you looking at here? All right. I've probably got a couple of more things really quickly. So yeah, the next thing, next thing I want to get to really quick around, let's do this. We already gave our predictions. Where do the Yankees finish in, in the East? And how far do they get in the postseason? You got to say it right now. They get to where? They win the World Series. They lose here. They lose that. That's the next thing. I got the Yankees finishing in, I believe it's still, I, I got them making the wild card. I think they get in the wild card. And I'll say this. I think the Yankees lose in the ALCS. I think they get to the ALCS. I don't think they win. I really do. And I think the big, big guy there is Juan Soto. I think Soto is going to be one of their biggest days. I, I don't know what it is that hurts them. But I got the Yankees losing in the ALCS. Hopefully they surprise me and actually win the whole damn thing. Uh, Kev, I'll go to you. Of course. Fuck it. They're winning the division and they're going to the World Series, but they're losing the World Series. That's fuck. Okay. <laughs> Christian, I don't care. Man. Man. What the fuck? I don't want to watch this year if I'm believing that otherwise, but that's just me. I, I don't I don't series. think that I don't think they'll win the division. Uh second or third wild card, most likely. Yeah, and I'm with Kev, man. What's the point of fucking watching if you don't think this team's going to win the World Series? This is an all or nothing year, bro. So I'll all in, bro. Let's fucking go. I'll see you in October, bitch. Mario? Miel La Palo Oriole. We're winning the division. <laughs> and and now we got a, a, a leader, a guy with nuts, con grano, a guy with heart, number 22. And him, 22 and 25, are going to take us to the promised land. 99, I need you to hit in October, bro. I desperately need you yeah. to hit in October. I don't want to get too much into that, but have to hit in October, bro. Carry us. Garrett Cole back. 55, putting his nuts on the mound. Game six. Take us home, baby. Yankees in six. Uh, Francis. Listen, man. <clears throat> I think one thing is important to say. A lot of people are actually counting this team out. And this has been the story that we, hasn't really gotten much coverage. I mean, you had the baseball reference bullshit. You nope. have a lot of other Underdogs. bullshit out there. Underdogs. You have a lot of people saying, I'm with Bronx or nothing when it comes to this. A lot of people are a little too, too high on the Orioles. I will say Francis respects them. I think they're going to be a great team. But sophomore slumps are real, and they're counting on a lot of shit to go right with young players, and chances are, that's probably not going to happen. Lightning never strikes the same place twice. And that's why I think the Yankees are going to shock a lot of people, though it shouldn't be a shock, when they go and win the fucking division this year. And I do think they're going to get to the ALCS. And I do think this is the year that we fucking beat Houston in the right. ALCS and we go to the fucking World Series. Now, I don't know if we win the World Series. That's where the train stops for me. Right? That's where the train stops for me. I don't know if we do. I don't know if we do. I don't know if we do. But I'm going to tell you this. Just think of Aaron Boone and go ahead and answer. No, no, no. Think, I'm think not thinking about, of Boone. Think about Juan think, Soto. Think if about I think Juan of Boone, Soto. If I think of Boone, I'm going to go the other way. But I'll tell you this. If we're in the World Series and we're staring across from Dodger Blue and the oh other side. Oh, my God. Oh, Dohei Otani and Yamamoto, nuts. we're going to fucking beat those people. I promise you. If it's Yankees, will be in jail in October, it, so you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> and, and who knows where Yamatoto is going to be by then, right? Oh, my if God. If it's Yankees-Dodgers in the World Series, I'm sorry, Dodgers fans. Yeah. We taking we, we, we busting that ass. We taking another, it. Another hot Whoa. take. Dodgers ain't making it to the World Series. They're not. They're not. Wouldn't no shock way. you. Wouldn't no, shock I'll you. say it right now. No, listen, listen to my words. No fucking way. Dodgers fan, <laughs> I, I guarantee you. The Dodgers are making it to the World Series. I'll they're put money on it. They're clipping this as we speak, and I love Good. that for you, Pete. Clip I it. love it. Clip it. <laughs> Clip it. Johnny, go ahead. Um, yeah, I think Pete Pete read my mind as he was talking. Um, I think I think this is an ALCS team. I think we're a wild oh, card. I think no. it's gonna Yo, sip the Kool-Aid. Kool it's gonna take 97 to 98 game wins to win this division. I don't think we're there. I think we're in more 93, 94. I think we're going to be solid in the wild card race. 
Um, I think we match up well against Houston. I mean, me and Mario and some others went to Houston and when Dominguez made his debut, I mean, th there's sort of an attitude with the Yankees, like, fuck these guys. We don't care anymore. And, and they played like it and they stepped up. Glaber hit bombs. Um, I mean, there was there was some good vibes from on the Yankees side in Houston that one time. Um, Juan Soto hit a monster blast off Verlander in the World Series and Garrett Cole. The guy is not afraid of that place. He's that not hater. afraid of the crowd. Um, he's not afraid of any of that shit. So I, I'm not. But but again, I'm not concerned about Juan Soto. I'm not concerned about about making a wild card. But when we get to October, guys like Rizzo, guys like Stanton, I, Glaber, Glaber does hit, but we're going to need that middle of the order to be creating a ton of runs, doing damage yeah. against good, solid, top end, high end pitching, flamethrowers out of the bullpen. You got to be clutch. You got to hit situational hitting. You got to move runners. You got to create runs. Can't just be sitting back trying to hit hit homers like Bader did that one year when he was our only fucking offense in the ALCS. So um, those type of things need to change to go deeper into the playoff to get to the World Series. Guys got to hit. Rizzo got to hit. Stanton got to hit. Stanton has a good playoff track record. We need him to be that. Aaron Judge got to step up. Got to be the guy. You can't hit 62 and then fall asleep in the playoffs. I got to see you doing the same type of shit in October. So a lot of things have to go right for this team in the first half. Yep. We're getting reinforcements yep. at the deadline. If we can add a top shelf starting pitcher at the deadline, I really, really, really like our chances to not only go to the ALCS, but win the ALCS and find our way into the World Series because I think this offense is going to be dynamic. Yep. And yeah, good pitching beats good hitting. But uh, then again, I mean, facing one Soto three or four times in the same game is going to be a problem. He's going to hurt. He's going to get you once. So um, I, I say ALCS, if they don't, if they don't get a top end second starting pitcher to go behind Cole in the playoffs, I think we lose in the ALCS. If they get a top end rotation guy behind Cole, I really, really like our chances with Stroman backing him up and having some great arms in the pen. Um, it's going to be a very exciting season, regardless. Um, Agreed. Even if we make the wild card, that doesn't matter. The Diamondbacks and the Rangers are both in the World Series last year as wild cards. So um, that's not a knock. I mean, you don't have to win the division. Just like Brian Cashman, Mister Mister Clusterfuck, uh, what does he call the crapshoot? I mean, mm -hmm. I don't agree with them. I think hiring Bruce Bochy and putting good players in good positions like the Rangers did means you win. But yeah, um, agreed. At the end of the day, you can get to the you can get to the World Series as a wild card. You can do damage in the playoffs as a wild card. So I like our chances there. Um, cross your fingers that a lot goes right, and uh, let's enjoy the ride. So I wanna I wanna add on something real quick. We're basing this off of what the Yankees have now. The Yankees have a very good chance, if everybody stays healthy, to truly be a devastating team come October. And yeah. I want to clarify that and let people understand. There's a shot Dominguez will be in there every day. Hell, yeah. there's an outside chance. Has to be. There's an outside chance that Spencer, Spencer Jones, Jones could be here in August. There's an outside shot of that. You never know nope. what happens on the club. You don't know if, if God forbid, Stanton goes down early and he's out. And the mm -hmm. Yankees are sitting there going, Spencer Jones hitting 265 with 15 homers in double-A. And, yeah, I think I think he's the guy that makes the most sense for us. And that's your outfit. And who knows how much better the team is. Now you're sitting there going, holy shit, we got a legit chance. Now, of course, if Pete Dombrowski was the GM, we, we'd be talking differently because Dylan Cease would be on the club and the rotation would be stupid. <laughs> But that's not the case. But I agree with Johnny. I think this team has a real, there's a legit chance. And that's going to be the key. If Just Hal Steinbrenner, yeah, well, not even that. I agree with that. But if Hal Steinbrenner puts the wallet in his pocket and goes, we're sitting out of this because we're at that limit and the Yankees are good. And you know in your mind, we just need that starter that's available. We just need that pen on, that closer that's available. Do it. We Do just, it. and they, and they go, I, I believe in who we have. Guys, it's... I didn't mean to do that. That was my bad. Oh, I, I got so play. confused. I was about to say. Huh? I just did a Aaron Boone smack on the table because and that's how it played. <laughs> it's but right in front of us. It's right in the front Kobe of us, finger. guys. It, the Kobe finger. That's it. <laughs> you, if they are able to do that, I think you're looking at a very, very different team and they can do it. Next thing I want, and we could ha keep having a conversation. Um, I do want to wrap up shortly because I know um, I want to respect Christian's time. But um, really, really fast, MVP of the Yankees, Cy Young of the Yankees. I got to do it. I'm sorry. I think it's Soto, and I do think I'm, I'm putting everything on the line. All chips in. Carlos Rodon. Boom. Kev, 
Oh no, no, no. Let's it's go to Johnny. First. Right in front of us. Oh god. Oh god. That? Don't don't play that right before I get on here, man. Come on. I'm just kidding. You said Johnny, <laughs> no. you said Kevin. Johnny. Let Johnny, oh, Johnny go first. Um, Cy Young of this team, I think he's gonna be very dependable. It's gonna be Marcus Stroman. Um, mm. until Garrett Cole comes back, obviously. Um, and the MVP is gonna be Juan Soto. He's gonna be his his opposite field approach to the to the Death Valley out there, that humongous gap in left center is gonna be huge. He could pull pull side comes natural. He's gonna do crazy things in Yankee Stadium. So um really looking forward to seeing him be the MVP of the squad. All right. Uh let's go to Francis. Uh I'm gonna go with MVP Juan Jose Soto de Pacheco. I don't see how this man doesn't have his best offensive season with the protection of Aaron Judge on deck every time he steps to the plate. Um, and for Cy Young, I, I like Lasagna's pick of Stroman. I think Stroman is going to be absolutely phenomenal in Yankee pinstripes. I, I like that he's hyped, and I'm just as hyped with him. Oh, yeah. Uh, Christian. Uh, I'm going to pick against Juan Soto here because this is Aaron Judge's team, and this team will only go as far as Aaron Judge uh, takes them. That's what Pop Simonetti would say. <laughs> so uh, I'm taking Aaron Judge as the MVP, and I'm going to take my heart out of this, and I want to say fucking Garrett Cole, but he's going to be out for two months. Again, you guys might think I'm fucking going to be crazy. I think it's going to be Clark Schmidt, man. I Let's think go! Be, I think he's going to be the most dependable, most reliable. <laughs> uh, you know, we all used to talk about the Monty start. Two to three runs, six innings, didn't jump yep. off at the page at you, wasn't sexy. But you knew you were knew you knew what you were getting with him, and I feel Very like true. that's the type of uh, season we're going to have with Clark Schmidt this year. Nice, Mario. Yeah, I want to go with Soto as well, but at the end of the day, man, this this is Aaron Judge's team. Mm. It's still Aaron Judge's team. I know the future. We want Soto here for fifteen years. We're talking about this year. The guy plays one hundred and forty-five games with Soto playing over one hundred and fifty. We're looking good, but I got to give the MVP to Aaron Judge. And I really, really want to give Clark Schmidt the Cy Young. But honestly, I think best case scenario, maybe this is a little bit of a crazy take. Stroman is our Cy Young. That way we can get that number two at the deadline. Mm. I, I think it's because I think if Rodon, if they see, you know, Rodon being good here and there, they're like, all right, Garrett Cole's coming back. We'll just ride with Cole, Rodon, and Stroman. But I think if they if Stroman shows that he's really good and Rodon's like, meh. They're like, all right, we'll get that extra ace. And then we got four guys. Hopefully, Rodon steps up in the, in the second half, or maybe he just has a great year. But we get four guys that we trust in October. That would uh that would be amazing. But I'll, I'll get I'll give it to Strowman. I'll give it to Strowman for the uh for the Cy Young, but I hope it's Schmidt. <clears throat> Kev. I'm gonna say this. I gotta agree with my guy <laughs> Mario and Christian here. I gotta say it's number ninety nine. Aaron Judge is the MVP. Not to take, and it's gonna be very close. All I truly rise, believe. I, all fries, <laughs> motherfucker. I do believe it's gonna be very close though. But when you put Soto ahead of Judge, the RBIs, Judge is always gonna have the more home runs. I think you're gonna they're gonna look at that, and Judge is gonna edge him out. And then when it comes to the to the Cy Young. I truly believe if this Yankee rotation is going to survive without Garrett Cole, Come on. it has to be fucking number 55. Let's go, baby! Every night I say, this is my fucking team until Cole comes back, all right? Come on. Come on. on. Go Come on. Let's go. Wait, before we, before we move forward, I got to play this. <laughs> Aaron Judge is a gift from God, yeah. Bro, I gotta, Jeff, I gotta play Jeff, <laughs> Jeff, Jeff said Cy Young Bauer. Let's go. Oh God! Oh no! <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, for the Diablos in, in the Mexican league, and for the Diablos, yeah, for the Diablos, more than likely he's, he should. He's very, he should he's very punchy. He should definitely, <laughs> he should definitely win it for the Diablos. So, guys, honestly, man, I, I really think we we covered absolutely everything we can cover. At the end of the day, guys, we all want to see the New York Yankees win the World Series. So much could change. Uh, from now until the end of the year. The team could look so different on the bright yeah. side of things. Just like we're talking about the Baltimore Orioles having guys on the mend ready to come up, so do the New York Yankees. Jason Dominguez is there. Spencer Jones there. We haven't gotten into the prospect side at all. We're not going to hear. But they they have a lot of stuff coming up. I want Aaron Boone to prove me mm. wrong. I want Aaron Boone to lift up that World Series, and I want to sit there and go, I was wrong. 
I'll sing the fucking Taylor Swift song. I'll eat the cupcakes live. I don't give a poot. For the Yankees to win the World Series. We'll all have cupcakes. We'll take a nap live. We'll do all that shit. No problem. We'll take a nap live. It'll be the Yankee (laughs) clubhouse live on NYYU. We'll have a sleeping pod. We'll have a fucking bakery over here. I'll bring bring the warm milky. Bring the warm milky. We'll be ready to rock and roll. That's what we all want here. We want the Yankees to win. But on top of that, guys, NYY fucking you is going to the moon in 2024. We're on a spaceship right now, and most of you already know it. We're heading there already, baby. And let me tell you something, folks. We got a lot more planned for you guys that you don't even know about yet. We're going to let you know after the event. But we got a lot of stuff uh, that we're working on. April 20th is right around the corner. Can't wait to see all of you guys there. It's going to be amazing. We got about 160 Packing the Audi Club. We're doing vlogs, taking pictures. We got some special stuff planned for that day, too. But again, I guess really quickly, I'll just go around the room for quick final thoughts. You guys know my final thoughts. I love this team really want to so give damn Clark much. Smith to Cy Young? My fault. My fault. My fault. My fault. My fault. My fault. I don't know. No, no, no. I, 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 the soundboard. Just what I'm saying. Yo, I love you guys. Come on, bro. Yo, don't play I, I, with so, your prick somewhere come else. Come on, brother. He had Chad GPT I, I hit, giving his last. I hit. Uh, his I last hit thing. the. I hit the space button. Unbelievable. I guess it, it put the I'm, I'm volume. Being, I'm having a shut little up, sentimental bitch. moment. That's what he, might, he might as well have told me that. He might as well have said, shut up, bitch. Come on. That's <laughs> exactly. No, this, this is, this is guys, who we are. This is, this is the best fucking Amelia. team that covers the New York Yankees. This is the 98 Yankees of, of, NY, of, of Yankee coverage. It's not even close. I'm not, again, I don't give a poop about who else is out there. Nobody Nobody's touching, touching passion, us. Bro. It's that simple. Yeah. It's that fucking simple. There is nobody like this team. And on top of that, Nobody that cares about the community and shows it the way that we do. I'll run. I'll throw it around the table real quick for final thoughts. Kev, go ahead. Yeah, man. I think we covered all the bases tonight. I want to thank everybody for their time chat. Thank you so much. Uh, I did ask who you guys think the Cy Young is in the chat. Um, but I'll do this chat. Uh, ones if you think over ninety wins, or twos if you don't. Because some some people are putting eighties for some reason. But listen, man. I truly think we have guys down there like Brophy. Shout out to Brof. Who, who who are out, out there every every spring training and he did okay, say? Okay, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm very I'm very very sorry. Ahead, All those ahead. pictures in those thumbnails. I have to I have to shout Brophy out. Brophy saved me today. He sent me a whole bunch of pictures. Brophy, nice. thank you so much. You're the best. All those yeah, pictures in those thumbnails are all from Brophy. But go ahead. Well, well, a lot fantastic. of ones in the chat. Over ninety. A lot of ones in the chat. Listen, um, I do have to believe that this is like like Brophy. I was going to say, I'm sorry, you lost my train of thought, okay? But sorry. listen, Brof is down there every <laughs> single spring training, and he did say to us, this is the the, the happiest and, the, and the, the best vibes he's seen in a Yankee team yep. for a long time. So that is, again, when it comes to October and everybody's ass crack gets like this. Hey, yo! Having, having a, a loose clubhouse, having guys that been there, done that, like Juan Soto, not like the, 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 the young guys on other teams and shit like that, having guys who's been there and done that, that's what matters in October. And I truly believe that this team, the Yankees, are going to put their Bronx nuts all over everybody's forehead in October, okay? No. Sorry, it's 11 o'clock, so I had to go a little extra there. But we give it to you raw here in NYYU. Okay. Talking okay. about raw and buttholes, man. Jeez. It's unbelievable. <laughs> you can't look. All I'm going to say is this, man. I am truly excited. For not only the Yankee season, but our season. Okay. Mm. This year is the year where you're going to, if you don't already know our names, this shout out to my tribal chief. You're going to acknowledge us this year, bro, because we're taking the fucking game over. I say this every week on NYYST, and it's not because that's the, this is the channel we're on. That's not because this is my show. It's because I truly fucking believe it. He is 100% right. Line him up, bro. We'll, we're better than everybody, okay? That's what I truly believe, man. We, I wouldn't be sitting here till 11.15 on a fucking school night if I didn't wasn't committed to this thing and didn't believe in what we're doing here right now, okay? So all I'm asking, the Yankees, you do your part, and we got the rest covered, baby. 28, we'll see you in November, buddy. Let's go, Mario. I'm not asking for a dynasty, okay. man. I'm just asking you guys to be relevant, one, win the god dang World Series. My guy Victor put it the best, and I've been, I've been dying for this moment. 
I know how the 90s Yankee teams were. I want to be the most hated again. I want to be hated because we're winning. I don't want to be the talk because they're knocking us out in ALCSs. Oh, the mighty Yankees. You guys aren't the mighty Yankees anymore. We got all these fan bases talking like, you know, what, what does it mean to wear the pinstripes? Yo, it, it doesn't mean yeah, okay. what you guys think it is. Sure. So I'm telling you, Juan Soto is going to make sure they know what it means to put on the damn pinstripes. And I, can, and I know they're wearing the grays tomorrow because they're away. But I cannot <laughs> wait to see that guy, a guy con grano, who's been in the World Series, who won the World Series at yeah. 20. I got, listen, man, I'm so fired up for this season, man. And listen, I appreciate the chat, everybody, man. We have a little bit of something, a, a little bit different here, man. Everybody, all, all six of us here, we work really hard to give you guys the best Yankee content. We all love the team. We want to see the team do good. And Booney, prove Mr. Simonetti wrong. Mr. Simonetti? And get us 28. <laughs> get 28 for us, brother. And Soto and Rodon, put your nutsack down on Houston oh, for us, all right? Make me Lots proud. of nuts. Make me proud. Okay. Johnny. Yeah, man. I mean, I mean, a lot of stuff going on. I'm super excited to be a part of this team. Um, it's a it's a truly a grassroots movement. It's the underground part is great. It's it's where fans can come and interact. I told Pete this from the beginning. I love the the fact that there's a chat, there's voicemails. You're giving a voice to the common fan. So what we're doing here is very important. Um, other popular shows don't do this. We also don't talk about little league kids after they hit home runs, but hey, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Anyways, there's something real special going on here. The fact that the growth is potential is enormous. It's already growing so huge. Look at the personalities we have on this panel. Look at the rest of the personalities we have a part of this group. Um, it's truly a talented bunch. It's not easy to do this and get on here and 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 spit off the top of your head about the team and stuff like that. Some people can't do it. And the fact that we're stepping up here, we have the platforms on Twitter. We have this huge platform on, on YouTube coming out here, putting our neck out. Putting our, our predictions face. on the record. I mean, that's that's what it's all about. So um, super excited to be a part of this group, uh, like I said earlier, and super excited for the growth potential going forward. Meeting you guys at the event, hanging out, drinking some beers, talking some shit. That's what we do. That's what we have fun. Um, in terms of the Yankees, I mean, th things are going to go fast. We always – we wake up – you wake up uh, one day later, and it's already September. So enjoy the day-in to day-out grind of a Major League Baseball season. The best. There's there's beauty in 162 games, waking yep. up every day, and there's a game to watch. Um, the, the intricacies of, a, of an at-bat of a certain player versus a certain hitter, those little things. Cherish the little things. Um, enjoy how fun this lineup is going to be this season because it's going to be one of the best we've seen in a long time. Um Enjoy the ride. It's going to be a fight. It's going to be, there's going to be some ugly times. There's going to be some really, really fun times. Um, I'm looking forward to going to a lot of games, um, but enjoy the ride. Hopefully it ends up where we all want it to be. Um, but just kind of, you know, enjoy, enjoy the ride. So i um, excited to meet you guys here soon and um, let's have a great year. Thanks Francis. <clears throat> Listen, man, shouts out to the best community in the whole fucking game, man. We love you guys. We couldn't do it without you guys. Shouts out to the team, even the ones who aren't with us right now on screen. Yeah. Everybody a part of this is what makes us the best in the business. Shouts out to Dane in the chat. Obviously, shouts out to the MVP because y'all know we could never do any of the shit that we do on YouTube, the lives and what you saw with spring training without the MVP. But to that community that I just shouted out, I hope to see y'all on the 20th, maybe another time throughout the season. But the number one place that I'm going to be looking forward to seeing y'all will be in November in the Canyon of Heroes. And you Let's will go. see me with the gauntlet because oh, oh shit, he pulled, he pulled that off his Johnson. It's it's gonna, it, it I out. keep it on the Johnson. I got to keep it on the Johnson, keep it warm. <laughs> but you will out. see me in November in the Canyon of Heroes. All right. And I don't want to see everybody in this community. Hell yeah. In the Canyon here. We're going to take over that shit this year. NYYU to the moon, baby. The Yankees got to follow our lead. Let's do it. Let's do it, baby. And just the last thing I'm going to add. Folks, tomorrow it begins, baby. Game season live, 30 minutes early. We're starting at 3.30. Post-game show right afterwards. Let's fucking go. The New York Yankees season is back. 2024 regular season is hours away. Oof. Nesta Cortez, make us proud, Please, baby, bro, please. Want please. to win. Please. We're going to win fucking big this year. 
Things are going to get greater and greater for the Yankees. I know it, damn it. And Aaron Boone, you fucking warm milk sipping son of a bitch. Let me tell you something right now. This is a message for you. This is a message for you, okay? You untuck your balls today. This moment you hear this. Untuck the fucking balls. Tell the players you play for me now. I am the tribal chief, as Christian said. Acknowledge him and win this damn thing. Tell Fishman, get the fuck back in your room and go to sleep. Here's a calculator, you cocksucker. Go play with that. Put him away. Tell Cashman to keep his ass upstairs and win this year. Tell them what to do and fucking do it. We're ready to win, baby. That's all I got. Let's get out of here. That counts as a ramp, Pete. You got two right. more? That's fine. That's fine. Peace, guys. We love you guys. You're the best. All right. We'll see you tomorrow. Top 10 radar. Yeah, we on your radar. Mm -hmm. Never miss dog. And that's on occasion. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we on your radar. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hey, on your look, radar. top floor lifestyle. Chef and boy, I'm cooking up. Top 